It is 7 o'clock, and I'll call to order this uh, April 15th uh, meeting of the Waterbury Select Board. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? Alyssa. I move to approve the agenda for the Waterbury Select Board meeting for today with three changes from how it's printed. One, to take the minutes of April 1st, 2024 off of the consent agenda and move it to right after public. Two, to note Forrest McDonald under the vacancy for the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. And three, after the 930 handicap parking in the business district item, to add a discussion on a light display for National Stuttering Awareness Month. When is uh, the when you're proposing to do was uh, national stuttering last stuttering item awareness. before next meeting agenda so between handicap parking at 9 30 and the end okay and is mike bard in the audience just wanted to check is anyone in the audience i i'm starting to wonder if i have the wrong zoom link because oh, there's boy. nobody in the audience he was uh, he said he would be i just wanted to make sure let me just double check yeah i do meeting okay ID. give me a quick Hot second right. here to. Want to try to zoom in? No, apparently I made two links. She's got the two links running. Um, so let me end this one because no one knows about it. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. reasonable. Yeah. A big crowd. I have to sign into the other. Um, Oh, thank you. See, there is an EFA benefit. There's two Zoom accounts, one for town, one for EFA. Oh. <laughs> Are we getting some free time off of EFA? Yeah, we have been since the planning commission was meeting so often. Mike does you indicate an, he'll see us on Zoom. Uh, I don't know the password. Hang on a second. Administrator. No, you got to it. Administrator. I know, right? Oh, Administrator. There's a T in there. Mini straight tour. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Mac PC case study. Oh, wow. Trump, yeah, it's here. No, something's wrong. There's too many characters. Uh, how many tries to give you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's okay. Just let it chill for a minute oh. while Tom logs you in. That's what you had for password, right? Was it that one? Yeah. Okay. Breathe. <clears throat> I think I'm going to do a bit slower. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. All right. We're all good. Let's see who shows up. Mike okay. does say via email he'll be on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And you know Mike's on there? No, he just sent an email at 5.30 and says, see you all online in an hour. Oh. So it does appear that his intent was to join. Um, <laughs> let me just check the... Uh, oh, so if you go back to that, yeah, the numbers. Yeah, this is the right one. 843, right. yeah, okay. There. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Sorry. Oh, great. There he is, my part himself. We've bridged the time-space All right. Um... So, <laughs> we, we had a motion on the floor. Would you uh, care to repeat it? Yes. Hi, welcome Zoom friends. Um, so our first item, I move to approve the agenda for this April 15th select board meeting with three changes. The first is to take the minutes of April 1st off the consent agenda and put them immediately after public. 
The second is to add Force McDonald under the Vacancy for Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. And the third is to add a discussion on a light display for natural, national stuttering awareness at 9.30 after the Handicap Parking in Business District. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Agenda is approved as amended. Uh, next is the consent agenda. Do I have a motion uh, and note that the minutes have been removed? I move to approve the amended consent, consent agenda as written. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the consent agenda is approved as written without the minutes. Next is the public session. Uh, anyone wishing to address anything not in the warned agenda uh, can please step forward. I ask that you uh, keep your uh, comments to three minutes. Anything requiring more time, we'll uh, get it on a subsequent meeting. Yes. Would mind coming forward and introducing yourself for the audience? Linda? Yes, yes. Uh, my name is Linda Gravel. And if you don't know me, I've uh, been working for New Coast for the last two and a half years as a delegate to Stephen Fiber building broadband. So I thought I'd come by because this is my end of my term, and I'm hoping that they have a, another alternate to replace the missing, mm -hmm. but I do want to thank the select board for trusting me with this appointment for the last two and a half years. I worked all four committees while I was, uh, and the governing board, while I was uh, the, your delegate. Uh, the first ones I worked with, the communications committee and the policy committee, and then I worked my way into the construction committee. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about that, fiber <laughs> optic cables. <laughs> And finally ended up in the Finance Committee. And that was probably the most work I did was the Finance Committee, trying to keep uh, CB Fiber afloat. Mm -hmm. They are now moving as a small company into employee-based, which is really good, not volunteer-based. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I see a, a very good future for them. Um, they are putting in for more grant money to con continue the construction. I can't tell you when they'll get to Waterbury. I wish I could. But thank you again for uh, appointing me. Sure. Linda, thank you so much for serving the town as uh, our appointee to CB Fiber and uh, all the work that you put into it. We really appreciate it. Thank you. It's very uh, fulfilling to do public service. So thank you. We hope we find someone as able as you to uh, come back in. Thanks again. Anyone else like to address something not on the warned agenda? Yes, Tom, come on up. Thank you, Roger. Uh, Tom, Laura Waterbury, just a um, couple of things. A, a shameless plug for Green Up Day uh, for May, so we're just over two weeks out. Um, it's unfortunate I'm making the plug today, but it's because I'm it's just an alarming amount of dumping going on. Uh, if you noticed it, um, and one question I had was the, and it's always been curious to me, who has responsibility for the underpass, directly under the underpass, with the graffiti and the, and frankly, dumping lately? Is that a uh, town or a are state? Are talking about the train trestle right over here? No, no, the uh, highway Stowe underpass, Stowe Street. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's not, um, there's a park there. That's there's a little pop the park, I do believe that's town property. Um, the, the, the underpass itself, the physical structure itself, is obviously not ours. We, we generally clean up dumping. So it's graffiti estate responsibility, or is it? Um, it, it gets painted, so it's almost a, it, it's like a six month thing, right? It goes, <laughs> beautiful paint job, and then we get more graffiti. It's it just, our, it's an indicator of a problem, it's right? It's not a responsibility, we tend to clean it up. Okay. And then I know you have on the agenda at some point in time, and I'm not, a, I'm not really a big fan of a bunch of security cameras and stuff, but if you do have that discussion sometime, that's probably a prime spot. 
to start thinking about. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Chris. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, real quick, because I know you've got a busy agenda. Could you comment a little bit on where the armory issue stands at this point? Um, if, pos if possible. Sure. Getting into the sure. So the state has told us there's no immediate plans to use the armory that they've been putting up against the April 1st deadline. Um, that being said, um, our zoning administrator some time ago sent them a letter saying they need a change of use permit. Um, that meeting is still in the works and they haven't withdrawn their permit requirement. Um, so the building has been renovated. They put a, a new source, new sewer service in, new electrical service in, and, and the building's now fully sprinkled. So it's ready for use, really whatever capacity they want. Um, so there's no, there, the department tells us there's no need uh, to use it as a homeless shelter at any time in the near term. But they're still, they're still pursuing um, the process for the DRD. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Alyssa. Um, I just wanted to publicly acknowledge and thank LEAP, which is Waterbury's Energy Committee, and I believe one of the only ones in the state that it's its own 501c3. They had their energy fair on Saturday um, and was just enormously well attended. It takes a lot of volunteer work to put together, so just thank you to LEAP. The town and community is really lucky to have them putting that on. Um, and then and I also wanted to give Karen the opportunity to let everyone know why there's vote here signs outside because I know there has been questions. So in public information, Karen, if you're willing. Uh, there's two votes going on simultaneously. They're, they're different. We have to treat them as two different elections. Uh, the Edward Fair Utility District annual meeting is May 8th. You can vote early now for um, elected officials. And the school budget ballot is available now as well, 20 days before the election. You can vote early in my office, 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, for the new rendition of the school budget. So those are the vote here right now signs. Um, and I'll, uh, yeah, Eric, uh, I was just going to say, uh, I appreciate the fact that you got us a bunch of uh, information over the weekend. Unfortunately, I, we had to post the uh, warn the budget or the agenda on Friday, so it didn't get in there. Um, but if you wanted to uh, say a couple of words about what you posted, my thought was uh, that uh, it's a lot of information and I'd like to have a review of the Conservation Commission uh, of, it, of that information. Uh, but uh, if you've got more to say, uh, you're welcome to step forward. Um, good. Yeah. So just... Uh... Eric Chip. Eric Chittenden, and I'm going to sit in Michael Bard's seat. I feel very important here. You okay with that, Mike? Got that, Mike? So, Absolutely. Eric, Eric is always welcome in my seat. <laughs> if you're not I feel besieged. Anyway, yeah. uh, anyway the, we have been doing a lot of work on the, on the, on the uh, petition that we're doing. And we're actually right here tomorrow evening going to have both the Stowe and the Waterbury Conservation Commission's uh, meeting right here with us. And we've been meeting with a lot of others. And we've been getting almost unanimous support. So uh, the key support that we really need is from the Waterbury uh, the Select Board itself. Uh, it's interesting that in the uh, use of public waters on the reservoir. Uh, Waterbury and Stowe are equal partners. The, the primary use of the reservoir, as we all know, is, the, is that it's the fl flood control. Flood control, then power generation, and then in 1963, uh, they added recreation to it. So recreation is actually the last, but uh, in all of the headings, it's uh, Waterbury, Waterbury Reservoir in the towns of Waterbury and Stowe. So we've had a a very a lot of support with the uh, Stowe Select Board, and and like you, they didn't want to do anything on the first meeting, so it'll be probably next week. Uh, there's so much I can say. I don't want to take up much of your time, but I'd like to ask if you have any <coughs> questions in particular that you would like us to address, because we're pretty well informed. Um, I guess uh, I wanted to know. Uh, my understanding is that the the regulation. Uh, of uh, motor traffic on the 
reservoir is up to the state, then they're the ones that have control, not the select board. So um, what is the, your strategy for getting the state to, to act on this? Well, the, the, uh, as of February 14th, a number of us here gave testimony to the LCAR, the Legislative Committee on Administrative Rules in, in Montpelier. And as of that date, uh, they approved uh, the, what we were asking for at that point, and that was a, a 500 foot rule from shore throughout the state. And so it's, it's a, Waterbury Reservoir is in a curious situation here because uh, the north arm and the east arm are protected now from wake boats. Uh, it's, it's the other arm, which uh, poses a lot of its own issues because, uh, well, for one thing, there are some boats that are coming out. They're on the drawing board and maybe out this summer or next year. They will be creating wakes big enough to create the pipelines, the curls, which you can actually be inside of. and. Uh, uh, they're six hundred thousand dollars, by the way, if you want to buy one, uh, Roger. It's on the list. <laughs> so, and we have uh, some handouts we can leave with you later too. But uh, and, and what was the, the, the well? It's really uh, you know, uh, you, you, it seems like this is a fairly uh, urgent thing. In your group and it is. Past, past couple of meetings, um, I was just wondering, do you expect that there's going to be New legislation on this uh, at this late date in the legislative yeah, no, session, le or the legis what's driving this? Right, the legislative process is over now. What it is is it's a it's lake by lake petitions that that, that will be addressed, and, and so we'll be one of the first lakes. We're trying to get ours in within the next two weeks. Uh, we've totally rewritten our uh, petition. Oh, Francine, could you come up for a little bit here and and. Um, yeah. Excuse me, I'll identify myself. I'm Francine Chittenden, and I'm the treasurer of the Friends of Waterbury Reservoir. Mm -hmm. And I've been involved with this process for quite a while. Oops, the chairs don't work here. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, and you know, people have asked us, other boards, and people have said, why are we so interested in this project? It's not that we're not interested. Okay. I'm wondering about the timing. Oh, the time. So the timing really is for us. We're being encouraged to. So the lake by lake petitions is something granted by A and R and DEC. Mm -hmm. We uh, in the early '90s we created a what we consider a compromise of how users use the reservoir, and that was part of that process. Was the Vermont state has allowed this uh, to go right, on. So maybe I can answer that a little bit. What what Roger's asking is. Uh, the timing, and if for us to have a dis the, even the possibility of a decision by the Department of Environmental Conservation uh, before this season, we would have to have it in within the next couple of weeks, and it will be because we're just about finished. We, this is our original uh, one here, and it will be similar to that, but it'll be uh, it'll be done and 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 sent in uh, uh, within the next two weeks. Yeah. And so well. Uh, I'm happy to put it on the agenda for next uh, next session. Okay, we will. Okay. That, that, no, that would be great. And again, we're here to answer questions. Um, just so you know, ask us anything right now, and maybe if you haven't gotten enough clarification, let us know too. Because no, okay, the, the information has been clear. I'm just wondering about the, the yeah. timing. The so timing is we, our intention. I've got that. Yeah, Thank is you. to put this petition in by the end of this month. Hopefully, a little bit sooner. Roger, can I ask a real quick question? Uh, not at this time. Thank you. Is there anything else that we could answer for anybody? Uh, okay. No, 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 I was saying. Um, would you like us to leave any of this, uh, any of this stuff? Please feel free. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out here and give it to you because uh, I've drawn up the, the, in fact, why don't you just get, I'll just briefly okay, show them one. Yeah. There's just one in particular. It's a map of that of the dam area, and um, and that's what it is right there. I've highlighted uh, three or four areas where the, the campsites are and so on, and the dark part there is where the wake boats will be allowed to to be. You can pass that around, for instance, if you like. And it's uh, 
the uh, thing is I've, I've labeled the 500 feet from shore on each side as uh, actually kind of gauntlet A and gauntlet B, and then there's a gauntlet C, but every single craft that launches from the Waterbury Dam will have to negotiate that. The, there's also some information here that talks about, and the reason why these, why these waves are so powerful, they, they're 10 to 25 times more powerful than a natural wind, waves created by wind. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they can flip over pontoon boats and any fishing boats and so on. There's pictures of palm, pontoon boats, one of them on Joe's Pond where the uh, boat was flipped up and put on top of the dock almost, one corner of it was. But there, there, there are accidents waiting to happen, that's the way we feel, and so. Uh, well, thanks for pursuing it. And, uh, yeah, so, so we'll see you in two weeks. Yep. Yeah, okay. great. Yeah, well, know. maybe three weeks, it will be two weeks, it'll be three weeks. So. Um, it's It'll the be first, the first uh, Monday in, in May. May. Yeah, May. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any other questions from the public? Chris, did you have something else? Oh, I was, I'll, I'll catch up with these guys. Okay. It, was, it was aimed at those guys. Thanks. All right. Nothing more from the public. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the entertainment permit for the craft fair. Second in the minutes. Oh, yeah, you're right. Minutes. Um, I would move to approve the minutes of April 1st um, as posted with the addition we had in the consent agenda at that meeting um, and a motion to approve the consent agenda was made by Mike, seconded by Kane, and it passed unanimously. So I would move to approve the minutes of the meeting with that addition about the consent agenda. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? He's abstaining. Mike abstains. I think he's delayed. It still passes. Okay. Why now is, why is Mike abstaining? The entertainment permit. Do we have the applicants here? I, I voted for. Thank you. I voted for. I just I put my hand up. Just couldn't get it up quickly enough. Okay. Sorry. All right. We'll stretch that. We'll see you All right. Welcome back. Uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, reintroducing yourselves. Uh, or, I believe, I believe uh, Ian was not here. Uh, I'm Ashley. Okay. I'm Angela. Uh -huh. All right. Um, and you came forward before, uh, previously, uh, and we asked for, I believe, a uh, parking plan and uh, something else. We have uh, pedestrian, the pedestrian plan, and right. uh, getting in touch with the... All right, and getting in touch with Rowan. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. So let us know how you made out, please. So we gave everybody a copy of what we have here as well. They weren't in the package because they believe you should bring them in, but yours your should be right there. So uh, okay. Sure Trying to copy them. Uh, this one? Yep. All right. Yeah, right. All right. Sorry. I just didn't see them in the package. So, the first one we're going to be looking at is this map. This is from the Rotary, a member of the Rotary. Um, she sent this to me, and the green arrows is where the parade will be going, and then the red arrows is where they exit. And not necessarily any of the floats will be too big or too small, we're not sure. But on the side here, there's a note that says any oversized floats will have to go through Dak Row. Mm -hmm. But other than that, they're taking this route, which does not go through there whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Ariel stated that more than likely there's no floats that go through there. Right. And we have that we email. Have an email with us. If you'd like to look at it, it's on my phone. I didn't have a chance to mm -hmm. print it out. Um, and we also made a copy of that row, how we plan on setting it up. Um, we're not allowing anybody on the baseball fields. Like on the, on on the, the dirt diamond, part, yeah. But on the grass, we're allowing people to be walking, have their table set up with a um, canopy type. Um, we also were planning on having our food trucks in the parking area. Um, there'll be six food trucks in total. 
we plan on, we actually has actually spoke to uh, somebody about renting porta potties, which we're gonna have available for anybody that comes through at each end and in the middle. Um, Do you know how many? We have five, but if we need more, we can get more, and we have one handicapped accessible. Okay. Um, our, so on this picture, I don't know if it shows on yours because it's a photocopy. Mm -hmm. so it's a little it's dark. A There's one with the map on it too, though. It's kind of dark. That's why I gave you the other one. Yeah, yeah. On that one. You can see there's cars parked here along this road out on, on this end of Dak It goes Road. towards uh, Winooski Street. Yep, right. Yep. We are hoping that we can have cars parked there. Just our vendors, not public Right, or that may be, you know, older, not be able to walk as far mm -hmm. or have a way to help, you know, get their, their vehicles moved. Um, Katarina also suggested to us that we use the municipal office parking. There's Anderson Field that has public parking. She had stated we could probably use in the post office. And we have vendors that are willing to just get dropped off and their husbands or whoever take their vehicles out. Um, there's also Satcher Brook that's got parking. And if worse comes to worse, people are willing to bring their vehicles up to the park and ride and carpool with somebody else back down after they're set up. And we've made it clear that when they come and set up, they have to keep their vehicles on the road and wagon their things right. onto the grass. Um, we plan, we have insurance, so we plan to make sure that this event is safe for everybody and that we respect the field. We're not going to let anybody damage it. We will have other friends volunteering to help make sure we have some kind of security like so that something lines. happens. Or if somebody got hurt or something, there's some people around that are, you know, available to help with any kind of incident, whether they need help carrying something or somebody got hurt or if there's somebody driving on the grass, we can stop them. We plan on um, blocking it off if it's full. There is chains we saw down on this side, and I know there's a gate. I'm sure we can just close it up so that we don't have people driving in and out. And we're um, going to have it one way so, so they can't... The no, none of your customers... They can as down. long as the this parking area, the first parking area, has space. But if it does not, then we're going to ask people to walk in. Okay. Because we are, we're going to cone off the um, graveled parking area on either side so cars can't go through because most of the pedestrians will probably be there for the food. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're going to be parked. And we don't want vehicles driving through there. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the far gate on uh, Winooski Street over here? As of right now, nobody can drive in it. It's a huge right. hole. Right. Yeah, so right. it's going to be closed. So it's uh, cars can't go through right. anyway. We, so We did a walk through, and there's quite a bit of damage in the grass and stuff as right. it is right now. Yeah. And uh, on Winooski Street by the cemetery, there's some parking there as well. That little pull-off, there's like 10 right cars that can get the there. So Entrance. And... We're going to revise the flyer a little bit also because we are not going to have a dunk house, which we had told Katerina before the last meeting, but I don't think it got brought up. We're not going to do the dunk tank. We're just going to have one normal size like castle bounce house that you have at a birthday party. And we plan to set that up next to the pavilion and the swing set so it's mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And if you guys have any questions, you can hopefully get to them. Well, thank you for, for coming back and uh, developing a plan as requested. Uh, questions? Hi, okay. um, as far as closing off the entrance and the exit mm -hmm. for vehicles, would that not impede an emergency vehicle? It could be opened easily. We just, we're just we going to have somebody standing up there pretty much alternating to make sure if the lot's full that cars aren't trying to go down and turn around because there's no parking. Unless there's an empty space that they know about, then we're not going to allow them to drive down there. <clears throat> Mike, you have any questions? Also, make sure we bring like a first aid kit. I have a huge first aid kit. So if somebody was to get hurt um, during this event, 
Um, not that I feel like anybody will, but if you know the kids are bouncing, and something, yeah. you never know. Yeah. You never know with kids. Yeah, we'll make sure we have that with us as well. We'll have you know our selves prepared for this. We you know it's a big event, mm -hmm. and we're planning that we we've done a few, and we're comfortable doing this. Mm -hmm. Could you just? Uh, Give us an idea of what you've done previously. That we do them at CrossFit Brook monthly. We have about 50 vendors every month, so it's we walk around and make we set up. Check and on them. Mm -hmm. We haven't done an outdoor event yet, but we have we have probably 15 people that are willing to help out and walk around and make sure people are doing what they need and taken care of. So, and what's the timing going to be again? Um, from 11 to 6, and our setup starts at 8, so the, our, their vehicles will be gone in plenty of time before the road closes. Um, I do have one yeah. question. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks. Um, so I, I know DAPRO is not part of the official parade group. I also know, having been to this parade many times, that mm -hmm. floats will use DAPRO. Um, I know it was said that they won't, but I've every year. Okay, because Ariel had emailed us two days ago, I believe, and yeah. she had said that they don't. And so. just in case, is there a plan if floats do come down? Um, they can't get through, so that's one that issue eliminated. Well, they can't get through because there's a huge hole, so they can't go to Winooski. Right, I'm not talking the, the other entrance. Right. The um, if for, we can ask that nobody, we can make sure nobody parks in that parking area so they can turn around during yeah. the parade okay. and make sure no cars come down. The road's closed anyway, so that shouldn't be a huge issue. Yeah, we can make it so that they can come in and out if they need to. Okay. If we know, we'll, we'll speak with the Rotary again. Yeah. We just been having a hard time connecting with them. Yeah, but yeah Dan We've hasn't been connected. Been able to email, and I've emailed. Yeah. I, I did talk to Dan McKinnon this morning, okay. um, and he apologized for not getting back to you, but uh, he did uh, acknowledge that uh, as far as he's concerned, uh, he doesn't need uh, deck row or his floats to come through and that everyone uh, should either make that sharp right turn onto uh, uh, Union Street or they can go around the circle yeah. and yeah. hit it on the way back. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, Alyssa. What's the plan for overnight? You have it as um, two days, right? We are going to contact the local sheriff department and see if there's somebody. But we've also told the vendors we don't, it's on them if they leave their stuff down there and gets, that's, we can't control. But we advise them very, like, highly to pack up your things. You can leave their tents and their tables, but they should not leave their products overnight. And they should just reset them back up the next morning because they have to do that in any other event anyway. <clears throat> yeah. Because, I mean, we could stay down there, but we're just two people. We can't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Um, what's the plan to manage the bounce house? I know one of the issues is too many kids and they can bump heads. We're going to have a few, pe few adults sitting there managing that, rotating throughout the day as well as parking. Okay, it? It's just a normal size. I don't know the exact amount. Um, it holds like 10 kids or something. It's a, like a birthday party size bounce house from Real Bounce. Okay. So if they're insured, they come and set it up and take it down themselves. Okay, so they, okay. Yeah. Yep. One more question. Thank you guys so much for answering all these questions. Yeah. Um, will there be, uh, close to the event, an official um, placement for each of your vendors? Yeah, yes. when we, we get our final list, we will have exact maps of who's where because we do that for our events now. Okay. Well, we'll also have <clears throat> some vendors that will be there on Saturday and some that won't be. So then there'll be somebody yeah. else that comes in on Sunday to take their place. So we'll have the two days mapped well, out okay. for each. How many vendors again did you? Right now there's 76, but we haven't advertised it again since we started this, just in case. So we haven't even gotten, we haven't tried to get any more or anything until we know for sure what's going on. Uh, Mike Bard. Yep, I still have some concerns about with the two events kind of having simultaneously, but I'm I'm leaning toward. Hey, this is a first time. Let's see, almost see how it goes. And if there are conflicts, you know, that may be something to revisit in, you know, the, the following year. But 
I think they've tried to address some of the issues that we have addressed before, you know, in our select board meetings, which I, th I commend them for. But, you know, uh, being concerned about public safety and especially where parking is so limited in our downtown, the NQID parade is a big draw. And I, I know that having the two together is going to definitely create some parking problems. Just my thoughts. Okay. Would there be a possibility that we could have vehicles park on the on River Road, like on the side of the road? Is that it's not point? our purview? It's a different town. Uh, <laughs> that stuck spray. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can contact Duxbury. And... Uh, you'd have to contact Duxbury. Yeah. Well, I can do that for you. But uh, yeah, I, I mean it's. It's a consideration. There, it is a little tight there, as you probably have seen. Yeah. Uh, there are some areas, but uh, you also <coughs> take into account human nature. Right. People these days only walk so far. Right. Uh, yeah. so, um, and there, there could be some parking along the uh, Lewis Keys Corner. Uh, the question on my mind is the, well, where there is parking allowed along that street. Uh, Cheryl, Gloria. Hi, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Yes, this is Cheryl Glore, Waterbury. Um, and just want to make sure that you know, um, they're going to allow people to leave their tents or the pop ups down there. Just want to make sure that who's responsible if something does get damaged or stolen. I really don't want the town and the taxpayers to be responsible for any damage or stolen items. So are we, are they bonded or insured? Uh, should something to other people's property while it's down there? Um, we, all of our vendors have had to fill out a, a liability form for the town, which we have collected a bunch, but we have until the 28th to, of May to get those in. And we're also insured as well, so. This is what our liability form looks like? At Katarina and Santos. This is, yeah, that's going yeah. Uh, all right, so everyone's signing. Yep. Yeah, and we are we've made it clear too that if we don't have those back by the twenty eighth, they cannot come set up because we need to Katarina had advised us that they all need to have their own. And the food trucks, they have gotten their um, own permits as well through the town. So the food trucks they had separate vendors for this. Yeah, they do. And they've all contact they all have been contacting themselves for those. Did you anticipate six food trucks both yep. days the entire time? Yep. And they're not like huge, they're just trailers mm -hmm. and they're not giant or anything, but yep. Any more questions? Alyssa? You had the May 1st deadline, so will you be able to give a layout by May 6th? Um, we, like yeah, basically. we probably can. Just the hard part is a lot of people wait until closer to the event to sign up. So we can give you another updated list, but like a week before the event to make sure you have or by the 28th when we need the liability forms back. Yeah, I'm just think really finalizing the spaces. Yeah. I would say I think it's really like, again, as everyone's acknowledged, a lot of really good updates on this and just acknowledging that we got it tonight and Rotary hasn't come back. We have a next meeting on the 6th, so I would say. Um, you, did you or Katarina wanna review anything? I think it'd be nice to have a little time to just do a final review before okay. the 6th. Um, I, don't know that I'd make a motion to, but I would say I would make a motion to support continuing to pursue the craft fair with the intention of improving it, up approving it on the sixth, pending final discussion from staff, final updates from Rotary, okay. and a finalized site plan with okay. the specific vendor sites. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I do have a comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got a, one correction to make, and the correction is this is not the first time this has happened. This is the second time this has happened. Mm -hmm. We did it last year with 31 vendors right on the same front row, same day. Scott Culver. Yeah, Scott Culver, Waterbury. Sorry, guys. Um, I list you a list of questions and concerns that I had the last meeting, and then thank you. And I've checked off most of them. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, she's so thorough. I love it. <laughs> So like I said, so being a MUTCD guy, you know, manual uniform traffic control design, so it's like 
there's a lot of questions that I have, like access egress. You can't have one way in and one way out. You have to have one. Of, you have to have both at once. Mm -hmm. Okay, two lanes of traffic coming down through. If you're going to accommodate a flow, we had more trouble with cars parking in that group. Having a traffic control plan when you get out of the facility is great. Once you get them to out, out of the facility, which way are you sending them? Like years ago with the parade, when, before the parade route swapped, and we're talking years ago, it was only a left-hand turn out. Everybody had to go one way or the other. They couldn't go right. It was all one direction. Um, the fire and emergency piece, that's pivotal. And I spoke with Gary Dillon, and he has not even been approached. So that really concerns me because you're going to have fire, you're going to have emergency at the festivities down on the other end of town. Their response time is going to be slim to any, depending on what's going to happen. Um, the parking piece, okay, no one even took Katarina or the town, who I just paid the fee for the Little League program, gave it any consideration that if Anderson Field was even going to be used or not. So we're in the bids of process to have a softball tournament down there that same weekend. So with having, you know, four, five, six, seven teams, however it's going to go, that's going to be our parking and designated area for there. So. We paid for this, we should be allowed to use it, and if we're gonna fill it up with vehicles for people to walk in, it isn't gonna work. So, like I said, it's, it's a lot of the handicap accessibility. We, when we did it over here, it was, it was horrendous. We didn't have a lot of them. And I, we said we had 20 some odd volunteers there. So, and the uniform traffic control officer has to be exactly that, a uniform traffic control officer. Not you can shut a gate, lock a gate, because that goes against part six of the MUTCD right from the get-go, and you could be in serious civil liability if something happens and that gate is closed <coughs> and there's an is a ununiformed person at that gate directing traffic. You have to have somebody who's going to be taking care of that. So I still personally have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I just I, I'm not feeling good about it at all. You can take my experience for you know for whatever you want to take it. I, I do not believe that Katarina is doing what she needs to do to make sure she's getting the good information to these individuals as well as taking the full entire scope of what's going to be happening in a half mile distance down Main Street. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I would also like to know what the name on the application for this process is because I also have some issues with a comment that was made the last public meeting we were here when they were told to go get an EIN in a business entity to run this program, and I know for a fact that these two individuals have been in business for better than two years, running under an entity that doesn't even have a tax set up. So here we are with this portion of the other piece that goes along with it. If you're going to put 100 vendors down there at 50 bucks a table, that's a $10,000 weekend. You're going to tear this field up. I don't care how much insurance you have. Every other person from August 30th on is going to is going to be damaged on what they're going to have to do down there. If there's softball tournaments, baseball tournaments, whatever it's going to be, dog shows, we do a lot of that stuff. And I'm here for the town at the same time. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that when that is left the same way that it's given at the end, or there's a lot of ramifications to other people who have paid for time on that facility. Okay. Thanks. Uh, yeah. You, uh, again, whether you're addressing me, not yeah. each other. That's fine. Um, I didn't mean literally shut the gate and lock, like I didn't say to lock it, mm -hmm. I'm just saying like so we can control like, <coughs> the flow of traffic whether they're coming in or out. Um, we're still in the process of working this whole plan out, mm -hmm. so whether it's a one way or a two way, whatever works better because we're still not familiar with all of it yet, we're still right. trying to put this plan together. As um, of right now it can only be a one way because of that huge hole. Time, I'm sorry. Um, we have most of this pretty well laid out where we're comfortable with it, with the safety of everybody. Um, and I don't understand why uh, this is such a big problem. We've already paid for this. We already paid to have the space, the permits. Um, why are we paying for something that we have to come to the board to speak about before like we had the impression that we had this rented, we had the space to do this. And then we were brought here the second <coughs> time now after we've already been told we had the space and we've already paid. Right. Just to be clear, your $100 in cash is still in my drawer. Well, I know, but what she's saying, we had to pay the, pa the permit fees also. 
And Katerina, I have all the emails. I've got the permit to use the space. When we got the email, we were under the influence or impression that it was approved and that, that we weren't told we had to do any of this. Mm -hmm. right. oh. Just two things. First, I want to point out um, Winooski Street will be fixed well before this. We've okay. been waiting to do it. There's been other priorities like mud season. Just, I think, I think tomorrow we will have a approved plan and some and about 14 grand from FEMA that they're going to give us to help with the long-term repairs for that road. So we've been waiting to finalize that to do the work, but it'll certainly be done by this craft fair. So there will be a way to get out over there. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee that. Second would, thing, uh, just a clarification: <coughs> Would uh, Katarina or someone else on your team be in a position to help them? direct the flow of traffic or should that be something that they figure out? I think it's something they've got to figure out. Which we which we have a bunch of people willing to we can put vests on them so they're uniformed if that's the issue. The other piece I just I just want to say just my observation but um, we had an awful lot of people here in town a week ago and um, we've had parking studies done in the past talked about at length uh, when 51 South Main was, was agreed to be uh, given to Salta Down Street. I think there's plenty of parking to be had. People sometimes have to get a little creative and maybe don't know exactly where they want. Um, but I think there's plenty of parking in our downtown for both mm -hmm. events at the same time. We don't need to use Anderson Field at all. We've suggested four other parking spaces besides Anderson Field, too. Yeah, and I apologize that, uh, that it has taken some time. No, it's okay. This is, we this understand. is a large event. We are, it's our job to protect the public. And we understand. We just, when we talked about it, we weren't aware that this was happening or we would have been prepared mm -hmm. sooner. Okay. Nope, that was all. I was just going to speak to my motion. The goal is to balance giving you a clear path to understand yep. your pursuing an event and recognizing that we want to make sure we have the ducks in a row. So that's what we're doing our best to do. And I will say we've all acknowledged that we, in general, want to streamline our parades and permit, if nothing else, for the time of our delightful audience members. Thank you all for being here. I'm just wondering how can he pay for an event at this field for that same weekend when we've already... I would say, and then my last was that my motion no, was to... He's saying his is at Anderson Field. It's not the same field. Oh, okay. Sorry. So, so mine was pending discussion with town staff we hire and enable Tom Lights to manage our recreation director, fire chief, okay, so other managers, so I trust him to do the coordination with pertinent department heads for us to have this to do a final review and in we three weeks. And if for parking anywhere, if there's an extra fee for parking, we're willing to pay for No, no, for I don't think that. there's any extra fees. It's just we want to have a plan that makes sense. Yeah, I was saying, we just got this tonight, so okay. noting that it's moving all, all right. in the right direction. We have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I second. Which way did you vote, Mike? I was in aye. Okay. Wrong button. All right. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Scott. No problem. All right. Now we move on to uh, board appointments. Uh, and we're allowing two to five minutes per person uh, per candidate. Uh, and the first one are three vacancies on the Development Review Board, uh, one uh, full-time position and two alternates, as I understand. First uh, person on the list is Tom Kinley. Uh, here. I'll still okay. Tom, um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, so... Just process-wise, we've received applications from most of the folks who are named on the agenda um, and or emails correspondence with Karen. And the thought being we move through two to five people and then could move to make appointments after we do everyone just for time and brevity. Yeah. Um, yes, Tom is not present, has been a 10-year member of the DRB right. and I believe current co-vice chair of some variety. Um, so is applying for reappointment. He's applying for reappointment. Okay. Um, next is Monica Kelly. I'm, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I am interested in being in DRB um, for many reasons. I'm very interested in the housing 
um, crisis that's going on. Um, I'm also interested in the conservation um, that uh, um, uh, we need to protect. Uh, in in uh, I live in the corridor. I love that corridor. Um, but I also understand that we um, we have some uh, human needs in that corridor. Um, but I, I'm very interested in learning more about the um, the regulatory process and being a part of it and um, contributing to a healthy community and one that um, is uh, forward moving without eliminating the value that we have here um, in our community. So that's really All right. it. Thank you, Monica. Uh, Alyssa. Thanks, Monica. Okay. Um, I would, oh, sorry, no, I, I had a question. Sorry, oh. that, was, that was my premise and the tone <laughs> timing was not great. Um, I note that you've applied for the Planning Commission in the past mm -hmm. and just based on what you just described around vision for housing and conservation in the community, I'm curious um, what drew the interest to the Development Review Board? Because that's the regular, that, that is um, executing the, um, the plan and um, helping people find solutions that, uh, and giving people, uh, you know, giving people the, the voice to bring questions forward um, and uh, resolving conflicts that may arise. <coughs> Yeah. Um, have you, did you serve on the Housing Committee? Um, I, I am on the WADC, yeah. Which is the Waterbury Area Development Committee, yeah. just for acronym soup. Sorry. <laughs> so there's lots of, <laughs> I'm also a real estate agent, so I see what that, what that plays out in real time for people in this town and other places around Vermont. Uh, other questions? Mike? You're muted, Mike. Uh, no, no questions. I know Monica quite well. I think she, she would serve the um, development for a few more well. Thank you, Mike. Yes, Alyssa. Just clarifying, we do have Planning Commission openings, Development Review Board is your I, only I want, interest. I'd, I'd like to be on the Development Review Board, yeah. I, I applied for the Planning Commission because there, was there wasn't, um, I think when I applied for the Planning Commission, there wasn't something on the DRB. Got it. Um, so that the DRB is where I'd rather sit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. All right. Anything else? Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Are we doing public questions, Roger? I'm actually Roger? calling him on the chair of the Delaware Board. Um, I guess uh, I'm not going to ask you about the Planning Commission. Roger, I do. Hmm? Are we doing public questions? Uh, With due respect to you and to everyone, I said this at our last meeting, so I am on the record at the end of the meeting right. saying that as a select board member, I do feel bizarre that we as a select board are charged with making appointments of members of the public. And to me, it's a select board appointment. And I feel bizarre when members of the public are asking questions of mm -hmm. prospective folks, if it's not all the folks. I mm -hmm. guess that's just, mm -hmm. so I think we should decide how we're approaching this for everyone. But it gives right. me pause, as I mm -hmm. stated at the end of the last meeting. Pete, do you have a lot of before this today? Yeah, People in the audience are free to make a public comment mm -hmm. this part of the agenda. Um, Right. Asking questions of the, the applicant um, is more of a responsibility. Yes. Okay. So I think the public comment they can clearly direct you to a, towards a line of questioning, but I don't think it's quite appropriate for someone to directly ask a question of an appointee. Uh, they should be directing to the select board. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. So let's uh, finish up with the uh, uh, candidates uh, for the DRB, and then we'll take uh, any other comments. And then we'll move forward with the next uh, series of. Uh, I guess I just more questions. One thirty. Is there yeah. two alternate positions? Did Joe leave? Um, yes. Yeah, Joe did not ask to be moved. Okay. All right. Um, and the next is Todd Belen.
Good evening. Good evening. Thanks for having me tonight. Sure. Uh, I just, I feel there is a little bit of a, I don't know, maybe still a stereotype over uh, the permitting process and review process. And I know there's been a lot of growth in the last couple of years, uh, just uh, through talking to some, some folks. Um, I'd like to kind of lend my life experience into helping streamline some of this and maybe get rid of some of the, <coughs> the cloud that keeps people from actually submitting applications. And I've been on job sites. So I was a realtor for at least 15 years. I was a mortgage loan officer for another decade. I've had a construction company, and currently I'm a licensed electrician with a small electrical company here in the village. So I look at blueprints and plans, and I deal with multiple different vendors, different contractors, and I'm on job sites where some are permitted, some are not, some we have state inspectors, some we don't, and I kind of like to bring more people to the table. I feel like um, some of the process is daunting for folks who don't have to go through it more than once or twice in their lifetime. So I feel like I want to bring a little uh, more fluidity to the process. Questions? Melissa. Can you share your perspective on local government and how you build trust in local government institutions? I don't have much experience with local government. Uh, most of my experience is with private homeowners and uh, commercial job sites and you know commercial business owners. Um, so this would be my first array really into public service. So the process is daunting enough to bring more fluidity. Could you speak to that a little in a little more detail? Just, you know, I, you know, even at one of our select meetings a handful of months ago, you know, someone got up and told a joke in what I feel is a kind of, I don't want to say a desperation mode, but making fun of a situation that people are disappointed about. Um, and again, this was a lot, maybe these stereotypes still exist and the process has gotten cleaner. Um, but I feel like I feel like folks look at these permits and look at having inspections and look at having inspectors come in and things along these lines as more of a beast of burden. And I I would hope to you know kind of break that stereotype and and this way get more people under the umbrella of actually filling out the applications and taking the right process. Excellent. Yeah, okay. Uh, so you've been very vocal in your disdain for EFUD and the 51 South Main Street project. Do you think you could put your opinions about some local development projects aside to enforce the rules that the DRB is required to enforce? Well, that's a standard. You know, I mean, I am allowed to have an opinion. I was actually interested in purchasing that property. Um, if I don't believe in a project, I'm going to have an opinion towards that. Um, as this has already been approved, it's now on the books. It's now planned to be built. Um, I don't have to agree with it. They're abiding by the regulations they need to. They've went through all the steps they needed to go through. Um, and they recently just, you know, I guess got the approval, final approval, I don't know, a handful of months ago. Um, so if I don't believe in a project, I'm definitely going to voice my opinion about that. I'm not of the group think. So if I don't believe that this is the right project for the community, I'm going to say something about it. But it's the uh, function of the DRB to apply the uh, zoning bylaws as written. Do you think you can do that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just you know, it's just another piece of information. It's just another document that you got to follow. We do that all the time, and with all the permits I have to pull for all the jobs that I do, whether 
I believe in the job or not, I have to you know, do everything to code and everything gets looked at and inspected by state inspectors and whatnot. Like any questions? Yes. Um, do you feel that you have any potential as a realtor, potential conflicts um, with applicants coming into the DRB? I'm currently not a realtor. That was just something I did in uh, my past, uh, which exposed me to you know commercial and residential real estate. But, ba but based upon those past relationships. Regarding what would what would be the past relationship? I'm sorry. Past relationships as a, a realtor. I'm sure you have have had a number of different, you know, clients and stuff that, you know, might come before the DRB. Um, it was in a different um, state. I have not been a realtor or a mortgage loan officer here in Vermont. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone care to make a comment about uh, the uh, DRB or appointments to the DRB? All right. Let's move on. We'll be again uh, making our uh, nominations for all these positions at, at the end of the session. Um, four vacancies on the Conservation Commission. We have uh, one applicant, uh, Martin Johansson. Marty's not here. Marty's not here. Hey, Roger. This is Amy. Um, so Marty is already a member. I think there might have been a um, misread on that, and he's still eligible, I believe. Yeah, his appointment has lapsed. And so oh, uh, I see. I thought we did a announce his with... uh, interest in being reappointed. Gotcha. I don't think he was aware of that. <laughs> no, he brought in the paperwork, Amy. <laughs> when I talked to him on Saturday, he had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, last week, sometime he knew exactly what we were talking about. Wonderful. Uh, is there anything I need to pass along to him for tomorrow if he's not there in the room? Um, we'll be making an announcement at the end of uh, all of these uh, okay. interviews as to who we're uh, going to be reporting. Thank you. you bet. Okay. Um, no more uh, applicants for the Conservation Commission. Again, I encourage everyone to uh, step forward. We will continue to try to fill these positions as, as uh, we can. Um, we have one person that has uh, put in their name for the uh, Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. It's just a reappointment. Okay. Forrest. Uh, who's not here? Uh, who's here? He filled out the paperwork. Yeah, he filled out the paperwork. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. And three uh, vacancies on the Plan Commission, starting with uh, the Chair, Martha Stax. That's my chair. Okay. okay. Katie Gallagher. Vice Chair. Okay. Hello. Hey, Katie. Katie Gallagher. Um, I've been fortunate to serve on the Planning Commission the past two years as Vice Chair. Also serve as the representative to the Housing Task Force in that position. Um, and really excited to hopefully be continuing with this work. It's um, also my profession and um, really dedicated to and, and passionate about sustainable land use planning, which is very nerdy, but mm -hmm. I love it. I um, have been living in Waterbury Center for the past four and a half years or so and um, feel very grateful to be able to call Waterbury my home. Any questions for Katie? Uh, yes, Alyssa. Anything you want to plug with regards to the ongoing work the Planning Commission is doing right now? The Planning Commission has worked very hard to finalize the updates to the zoning bylaws for phase one. We're very excited to be sharing those with the select board and moving on to phase two very soon where we'll be doing a lot of community <coughs> outreach. I think will be um, also a really positive 
uh, phase of this work. All right, well, thank you so much for your service. Thank you. Mike, do you have any questions? No? Okay, uh, Robert Adler. Online. Online. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, yes. Um, yeah, I'm Robbie Adler. Um, I submitted an application to being on the Planning Commission. Um, I uh, live in Waterbury Center. I have two young daughters, a wife. Um, I've lived in the center for a little over six years, on and off in Vermont for a little over 20 years. Um, I'm interested in joining the Planning Commission. I've, I've had a chance to speak with Dana Allen, who's a member of the commission, just to learn more about it. Um, I attended the walk through town this summer around phase one plan. Um, I, you know, as a, uh, luckily a homeowner in, in Waterbury, but I have, you know, many friends who are currently in a situation trying to find housing or, or, uh, you know, purchase a home in the area. Um, I'm eager to see, uh, you know, uh, us put into place, um, zoning regs that will allow Waterbury to, um, uh, grow in a sustainable way, uh, in a way that ensures people who want to come to, to our town have the ability to do so, uh, but balancing it against the competing pressures that we face from issues like flooding and, and otherwise. And <clears throat> I think zoning, it's really our long-term plan for how uh, Waterbury Berry, uh, can and will be developed. Um, and, um, you know, I see it as, as kind of a foundational uh, role to ensure that those bylaws allow for uh, a bright future for Waterbury. I understand the commission's role is really advisory. Um, I was incredibly impressed by the work of the committee when I got to go to the public meeting and just kind of see all of the, the work that the commission's put in for phase one. And um, as a community member, I'd love to participate and help in that process. Um, and I uh, saw that there was a vacancy, so I uh, threw my hat in the ring. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you. Questions for Robbie? None? Uh, Alyssa. Did you offer to share the pro bono GIS work that Dana is currently doing for the town? Would that be part of your I, work on the Planning I, I Commission? Think, uh... Dana, Dana, my, my, my GIS skills are about 20 years dated. So, uh, I, he, I, I still will probably rely heavily on him, but, um, I do, I do understand GIS a little bit. Um, worth the ask. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Okay. Um, just for the sake of asking, because we have so many holes in so many committees outside of, uh, you know, cause we've had holes in the housing task force in the past. Why did you pick planning over all the other committees? Um, I, I will give uh, part of it, honestly, is just I'm not I, I, I'm not always abreast of all of the openings. Just it's not something I keep track of. I'm, I have a little bit more of a connection to uh, the Planning Commission just through through my friend Dana, who's on the committee. Um, and I would say over the last couple of years, I've just become much more aware of uh, the impacts of zoning and and uh, how it intersects with with um, the housing crisis. Um, the housing task force is definitely of uh, deep interest, uh, I would say, but it's something that I just I think I, I was unaware of kind of openings or, or learning about it. But um, housing generally is an area that, you know, as I look at all the problems facing the state, I understand is like such a crux issue. And um, it's something where I'd you know like to help participate and see see how you know how I can uh, advance things for the for the town. Great, uh, Mike. My question is similar to Kane's. Um, should we not select you on the planning commission? Would you be interested in that and? Being a member on the housing task force, um, I, I would certainly, I would certainly be open. I, I don't, I don't know a ton about the work of the task force, but uh, at the surface level, at, at kind of um, from title, yes. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in um, working on housing issues in, in Waterbury, and um, I'm happy to help however I can. I, it, my back, my professional background is 
somewhat relevant, but not directly, you know, I'm not in the trades or any, anything like that, but I have more familiarity with zoning just from early work in my career, um, where I worked, worked on this, um, outside of Vermont. So. Now, just based upon <laughs> your initial preamble, you know, housing seems to be an interest and there were some connections that I saw on your resume that I think the housing task force would benefit from. So, you know, yeah, yeah. E e e either could be a good fit. Sure. Um, yeah, I'm happy to look more into it. If, uh, if you all want to direct me to someone I could chat more about uh, the task force with, I'd, I'd be eager to have that conversation. Sounds good. Thanks. Hello, oh, okay. thanks, right? Yeah. The task force doesn't have the same structure as the other boards. So oh, okay. Now there's no opening. No. So that's it. And there are three openings on right. the plan right. commission. So I don't right. think that it's going to be a big issue. Um, all right. Any other comments uh, about the plan commission? We will move on uh, <coughs> to the four vacancies on the recreation committee. First is Paul Lawson. To be reappointed. Paul's not here. Okay, and then uh, Emma Lynch Lynchner. So Emma is, I understand, currently taking the test to get her purple belt. Purple. Purple. So, that's what she said. Um, so she'll be stopping by much later this evening, um, hmm. probably after nine. In, in a peaceful mode, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we can uh, discuss her application when she gets here. Okay, sure. Brian Cook, the Morta. Hey, everyone, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, sorry I couldn't be there tonight, but thanks for the opportunity to talk. Uh, my wife and I moved to Waterbury in 2019, and uh, since then we've Obviously, one of the reasons we moved here was for the recreational resources that are around town. And uh, and since then, we've been involved in in a lot of organizations with Green Mountain Club and, and WADA. And those opportunities have been great. You know, we've been really enjoyed uh, volunteering for those organizations. And uh, I really wanted to be involved more consistently. And, uh, and since we have a two-year-old and another on the way, we've become uh, very... Uh, familiar with the town of Waterbury resources, with all the different parks uh, and, and uh, programs that the town offers. So uh, we love that. Uh, it's uh, it's a great uh, town for, for raising a family and we want, or I want um, to be more involved uh, with the recreation committee uh, because I think that's a good opportunity for me to give back to the town uh, for the things that it's given to our family. Uh, and so, um, in the past, I've worked for the Forest Service and uh, and worked with Audubon Society uh, with recreational projects outside of Vermont. Um, I don't work in uh, in that stuff anymore, unfortunately, um, but I would love to be back involved with it through the town. Uh, and uh, and as noted on the agenda, I do live in Moortown. Uh, I have a Waterbury mm -hmm. mailing address. My water comes from Waterbury. Um, I live in the Gallagher Acres neighborhood just outside of Waterbury. So um, Waterbury really, I mean, I love Moortown, don't get me wrong, but uh, <laughs> but Waterbury is where we go for everything because we're so close to Waterbury. So um, would love to be involved with Waterbury specifically. Um, so yeah, open to questions. Thanks for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I have served as liaison on the, uh, from the, select boards to the um, Recreation Committee, and Ian has uh, just recently taken over that role. Um, and one of the things that we recognize is that uh, Waterbury does serve, uh, particularly Waterbury Recreation, serves a community that is beyond the borders of the town. Uh, so uh, I personally don't have any issues with uh, appointing someone from outside the town uh, to the committee. But I'm open to other questions and opinions. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Sure. Uh, how long have you been involved with Green Mountain Club in WADA? So I volunteered periodically with like trail work. I've only gone for WADA only a couple of times, um, but that's something I'd like to continue doing. Um, and for Green Mountain Club, uh, I maintained a couple sections of trail 
uh, over the past couple of years. The last time I did it, it was the Clara Bow Trail up in, uh, in Moscow. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, Mike. Yes, um, I have a quick question for you. I know you're a relative newcomer to town. Based upon being a newcomer, what do you think the Waterbury Recreation programs are lacking that you would like to see brought to Waterbury? Uh, are you speaking specifically about yeah, the like the education, like the summer camps and things like that? No, j just in general, you know, recreation opportunities around town. Oh, recreation opportunities around town. Um, well, one thing we noticed as a, you know, as a, with a young family and kids, like, I, you know, I think the the playgrounds, the, the number of playgrounds are great. Um, you know, we have a lot of different playgrounds in different places. Um, but with a with a two year old who's just really walking and just kind of finding himself, there are parts of uh, the playgrounds that feel out of uh, out of reach for him in, in, in all the places. Um, so there are there are, a lot of the playgrounds have uh, some some tough spots, we'll call it for for kids that are that age. Um, and so there's something that I think uh, we could explore is some potentially um, if we do have the opportunity to look at playgrounds and and those things, we would maybe make them make some areas better for that age group, the, the really young walkers. Um, that's one thing. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Ian. Um, hi, Brian. Um, quickly, did you say you had two children, a two-year-old and an older child as well? No, a two-year-old and, and one on the way this summer. Oh, gotcha. Then I'll hold my question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll set with Brian. Thank you. Uh, Aaron Starmer. Hi there. Um, thanks for having me. I'm Aaron Starmer. Uh, I live in Waterbury Center, right down the street from Hope Davy. So I'm there all the time. So I, I see all the comings and goings there. And I'm also a father of a 10 year old and a six year old at Crossett Brook and um, in Brookside. Um, so I've got a very strong connection to the school community. Uh, I'm a uh, author of children's books. I, I travel to a lot of schools. I speak to a lot of children, speak to a lot of teachers and and, uh, and administrators. So I, I, I sort of know the world of kids. I'm in the middle of the world of kids right now. And I look at our community and I see a lot of potential in sort of all the fields and facilities that we have that are in need of updates. Um, and I've been attending a lot of the school budget talks and sort of paying attention to that because it's going to affect our family uh, more than anyone. And I see all these sort of roadblocks we're hitting there. And being on the Recreation Committee seems like an avenue where I can actually make some difference and, and make a little change to make their lives better, make the community better. Um, my, uh, my in-laws live in Essex, and we will spend a lot of time visiting them. And the, they live right down the street from the recreation facility in Essex. And if you've ever been to that facility, um, it really sets a standard that, that we haven't met yet. Um, and I would like us to meet that standard um, and help in any way that I can to meet a standard like that. Um, I know a lot of the, since I live in the, the center, I spent a lot of time at the reservoir. Um, I, didn't, I don't know what the latest is on when it might be closed uh, for repairs. There's always rumors of that, but I can tell you if and when that happens, it's going to change a lot of people's summer activities, and the recreation department should have to pick up a lot of that slack, including the pool, which obviously is in, in great need of updates. So I'd like to be involved in that. Okay. Questions for Aaron? Nice. Got anything? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Um, um, Aaron, uh, quickly, uh, you talked about the fields in need of updates. Can you specifically mention 
a field an update? Or well, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it's the actual fields themselves. I, we have so many resources here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've got an older daughter that, you know, I've, I've coached in soccer and mm -hmm. lacrosse. And we do a lot of traveling around. Um, and I think that, you know, we've got some of the best options around. Um, as, we, as we learned earlier, things like parking, things like logistics. Um, Anderson Field is, is woefully underused, that whole section of Waterbury. And I know there's a lot of talk of doing stuff down by the Ice Center that, that could open a lot of more opportunities up. Um, you know, we're, we're just, we've got a great position here in the state um, to do a lot more with what we have. Yes, Katie. Um, as someone who also lives right by Hope Davy, uh, how do you feel about disc golf? I do well. You know what? I, I am not a uh, I am not an avid disc golf player. I have some discs. I have played. It's a great course. I understand the issues going on with the development there. That was the question. Yeah, um, <laughs> and uh, you know I, I haven't gotten the latest. I know that they're they are rerouting a couple of the holes to keep them away from some of the new houses. I don't know where all the status is there. Um, I would say, just from my experience, it is used more by out-of-towners than it is used by residents. Um, in the summer, the parking lots are always full, and it's primarily people from Burlington, because it is a very good course. It's a very, you know, um, it's, it's something that people come to. So I think it's a, a valuable thing to have in the community, but I do understand, and I've watched that development over the last seven or eight years, sort of trickle into existence is, you know, one house every year or so. Uh, but, you know, with, with our housing situation, we would like to see that expand and, and coexist with the disc golf course in a good way. As someone who plays that course, he's absolutely right about it. Mostly people from Burlington. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Eric? Just yes, Mike. Just on a just on a lighter side, what Division Three lacrosse team did you play for? I played for Drew University in in Madison, New Jersey. It was uh, back in the back in the old okay. days. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Did you have? This has come from a long stick. Yeah. This no, I was. From yeah. A long stick midfielder. I, <laughs> yeah, I played long stick midfield and defense. Yeah, I, I grew up in Syracuse, New York, so that was a religion growing up. Um, but that says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Okay. I played long stick defense. <laughs> Not anymore. I just well, try to encourage you. I'm too old for that. Any other lacrosse players? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Long stick midfield. All right. Uh, we have two vacancies on the tree board uh, with uh, Mike Machado uh, asking to be reappointed. Is Mike here? No? Okay. Um, and then a, a delegate and an alternate position open on CB Fiber and uh, Chris Schenk. He's here. Yes. Good evening. Um, so, yeah, I'm asking to be reappointed. Um, I, I joined CV Fiber in August of 2021, and I uh, I served alongside Linda Gravel, who's with us tonight. Um, she was the delegate, and I was the alternate um, for a little over two years. And then a couple months ago, Linda decided to swap roles and, and has since decided to, to step down. So I've been serving as the primary delegate for Waterbury at CB Fiber, and I would like to continue to do so. Okay. Can you point to your uh, most significant achievements? Um, I would say the recruitment and appointment of CB Fiber's, um, um, uh, I just, her, her uh, title has just escaped me, but the, um, the president of, of CB Fiber, um, when we started, Executive director, thank you, Linda. Um, yeah, so uh, CB Fiber started with with no uh, no employees at all, um, and I I wrote the recruitment and onboarding process for CB Fiber, and 
um, led the recruitment of, um, of the executive director, and then they've subsequently used that to hire um, two or three more employees. So That sounds pivotal. I think so, mm -hmm. and I think we did a very good job because uh, Janelle Smith is, is really great at her job. Right. Other questions for Chris? Thank you. Thank you for serving. Yeah. Happy to do so. Uh, Mike Barton. You're muted, Mike. Still muted. Still muted. Hit the button hard. <laughs> there it goes. I only hit it four Ooh. times. Um, Chris, Fiber's been very recently in in the news as to what viability a lot of the local fiber services are going to have because they they haven't expanded nearly as quickly as they expected. I know the board has showed an interest. You know, we would like to see fiber, but most of the things we want to see fiber for is for those not served or, you know, you know, not well served by, you know, other traditionals. Could you comment on some of those news reports? Well, funding is definitely an issue. Uh, I'm not an expert. I'm not on the, the finance committee. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not fantastic with the finances, but I do know that, that funding has been a, um, a significant issue um, through grants and, and everything. But um, we've lit up over 200 customers now, and the plan is, is continuing to move forward. So as long as, as funding holds out, it will happen. Um, it just, you know, might unfortunately happen slower than we would like, but we are, you know, keeping to our promise of starting with serving the unserved and underserved first. Um, and I am one of those, technically speaking, I am unserved, even though I do have very slow DSL internet, that is still technically unserved because it's, it's under the 25 megabit cap. So it is, it is coming. I'm very hopeful. Um, it, it'll, you know, for me personally, it'll probably be another two years, which is, you know, painful, but it's coming. So I've held on this long. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Chris? All right, thank you for your service. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, one vacancy on the Cemetery Commission. Open seat not filled on town meeting day. Uh, but Karen Cavender has uh, put her name in. Is Karen here? No. All right. Um, True Warden. Mike Lachavo is uh, serving, currently serving as tree warden and is asked to be uh, reappointed. I've already tested this and Mike was not here three minutes ago. I don't think he's here now. All right. Uh, and then uh, representative to the Mad River Resource Management Alliance, Alec Tuscany. Alec is not here, but I did speak to him on the phone and Okay, reappointment for Alec Tuscany. All right, that brings us to the end of the candidates. Just clarification, uh, Alyssa, were you uh, suggesting we uh, make uh, appointments at, at this point? Or at the I'm good with that, or we do have, if we're waiting on someone for rec, I'm happy to do it after that. Um, yeah, well, we don't know when uh, she's going to include her purple belt in the file, so <laughs> maybe we could do it now and then uh, point to her separately okay. if uh, we decide to do so. Wow, this is going to take forever. Um. Blast through. All right. So, so go back to uh, the uh, Development Review Board. Do anyone have a motion? Um, I move to appoint Tom Kinney to a full term on the Development Review Board ending April 30th, 2027. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Mike, you want to raise your hand or say aye, you're muted. Mike. Aye. <laughs> aye. Okay. Wow. Let's do the DSL. Um, <laughs> Roger. I move to a point. Do my mind. Okay. Is he? <laughs> Are we? Is he doing something? No. Oh, okay. I move to a point. <laughs> Keep going. Thank you. <laughs> I move to a point. Monica Callan to the alternate position on the DRB. I second that. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I also think it would be it, it, it's good that. We're having, um, a because the DRB has historically been very male dominated. And I think, as a matter of fact, I think the whole committee is male. So it will be nice to have a female perspective on the committee. Okay. Any other motions uh, for uh, the DRB? She was. I make a motion to approve Todd Volatis, if I got that right, for appointment to the uh, DRB. Do we have a second? <clears throat> Not hearing a second. Okay, we will move forward. Um, Four vacancies on the Conservation Commission. Uh, I'll move to appoint Martin Johansson to a full term ending April 2028 on the Conservation Commission. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That is approved. One vacancy on the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. I move to appoint Forrest McDonald to a full term on the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee ending April 30th, 2027. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Which one was that, Mike? You for or against? For, I said aye. Yeah, I know, but it comes <laughs> like two minutes later. Uh, okay, he's for. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that one's approved. Three vacancies on the Planning Commission. As the, motion. as the liaison, I'm doing this as a slate with thanks to our returners, Martha and Katie, so I would move to appoint Martha Statkus and Katie Gallagher to two full terms on the Planning Commission ending April 30th, 2027, and to appoint Robert Adler to one unexpired one-year term ending April 30th, 2025. Second. Great. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. <laughs> I think you got it in right before I said that. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, the slate is approved as, as moved. Four vacancies on the Recreation Committee. So we may have to table this one until Emma. Uh, well, we can do three. The three, and then we can come back to Emma. So that okay? leaves her just with the one year. Oh, right. Um, all right, well, why don't we wait, and maybe she will show up before that. Um, two vacancies on the tree board. One I'm, candidate. I move to appoint Mike Lociavo to a position on the tree board. Do we have the. Ending April 30th, 2027. Ending April 30th, 2027. Do you want to also appoint him sure, tree yeah. warden in that motion? Yeah, can we do tree warden too? In the no, same motion? Do a whole different thing. Okay. Fine. Second the motion. Okay, moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That is approved. 
Uh, I, I apologize. I didn't get your delegate to CV fiber on the little cheat sheet. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not using the cheat sheet. No, I'm not using the cheat sheet. Okay. Um, let's uh, go with the delegate to CV fiber. One candidate. I make, I make a motion to uh, approve Christopher Shank as our delegate to uh, CV fiber. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Christopher Shank is approved as delegate. One vacancy on the Cemetery Commission. I move to appoint Karen Cavender to a position on the Cemetery Commission. Is that, that's not on our cheat sheet either. Until town until meeting day. Until town meeting day. Mm -hmm. Until town meeting day. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That is approved. Now, true warden. I move to approve Mike Lociavo as tree warden for a one-year term. Mm -hmm. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> All right. Tree Warden is approved. Representative to the Bad River Resource Management Alliance. I move to approve Alec Tuscany to a one-year term on the Mad River Resource Management Alliance. Second. I make a move up. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Two seconds on that one. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That is also approved. And uh, we can, uh, I guess, hold on the um, recreation committee until uh, we uh, hear back. Uh, if uh, we want to hold it until nine o'clock, okay. we'll see if uh, Emma uh, Lynch here shows up. Thank, thank you to all involved to volunteering to serve yes. the community. And thank you all. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, moving on. Policy for special article payments. Tom? If you want to take this one to Mike. Okay. Mike. Yep. Uh, um, go ahead. I'm a, I've always been a big believer that we need to have some sort of accountability for people, uh, for the the nonprofits that apply to become uh, special articles. I know Karen has almost beat people down to try to collect money. And uh, I think it's it's reasonable to, to expect that if we don't receive the information, and I'm almost going to say by January 31st that we do not we send them a letter and say we're we're not uh you know you know paying uh the special article that has been voted in because they haven't submitted the prop the appropriate documentation so um you're proposing that anyone who has been the, the voters have approved the allocation, but if they don't submit right. a uh, an invoice to us, um, then it, they don't get invoice in town report by by the thirty first, which kind of is is a warrant period. Thirty first of which month? Of warning. Thirty first of you know the following year. There are a lot of thirty first during. A, a particular year. But do you have a month in mind? First of January. I, I, I think I said before. January. All right. <coughs> uh, discussion. Yeah. Okay. You go first. 
No, I was just saying, so this is background to our Monday, January 29th meeting in the fire station, if anyone stayed after for that, um, just to say where we felt like we needed to have a consistent policy on this right. to help support Karen. So I'd be curious from Karen what your suggested proposed timeline is as the one doing the chasing. Yeah, I, I paused to consider January. When, when was your deadline for your report? <laughs> <laughs> Can you remind me of the time? <clears throat> That you gave to me. Yeah. What was that like? The day before town meeting day. Uh, no, okay. I think I think if there's going to be a policy, I think December thirty first is plenty of time. The calendar. December thirty first. Well, we usually pay the invoice in December, yeah. so January seems unreasonable. Right. So we would need an invoice by the thirtieth of. <coughs> right. We're giving them a thirty day leeway. November. So the the challenge. I could make an argument. I don't need an invoice. The challenge we have is if they're approved in the budget as an item in a warning, their own warning, I think we have a legal obligation to pay it. Mm -hmm. That being said, the history is when someone petitions to get on the warning, it's carried forward year to year. If they don't bother to ask us for the money and to do the basic work, like sending an invoice or an email, maybe the select board's policy should be that they're not automatic and they've got to repetition. Because if you don't ask for the money, maybe you don't need it that bad. Right. It's not that hard to get signatures. What do you think about that as a friendly amendment, Mike? That's a very friendly amendment. I, I, I just think it's like people who petition every year and they just expect the money. You know, it's it's not a high bar that we're asking is getting an invoice and something for the town report. So, I don't know. I just, I, I it frustrates me. And. I, I'm trying to help Karen with her documentation because I don't think it's 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 her job to go chasing after these people so many times to try to get them paid. They should be, you know, they're they're all big boys and girls, you know, and they just need to get the documentation together. And you know, if you send them one warning, say after the. Uh, you know, you know, we have asked for that documentation right up front. And just because, you know, they're a yearly ballot doesn't mean that they're going to get paid. But mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess what I'm understanding is that we would send them a letter uh, saying that we need uh, an invoice by the 30th of November. Uh, if we don't receive it, we'll still pay them by the 31st of December but to be back on the uh, 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 town meeting agenda, they will have to petition to get back on, which means they need a certain number of signatures. Yep. If anyone wants, cares to restate that as a motion? Um, I'll state that as a motion. Um, yeah. I, I think any... Any entity that applies for uh, a special article appropriation, they need to submit things by November 30th, we said. And if they, if they don't provide everything that we need by January 31st, we will ask them to resubmit a petition on on the on the next year's uh, award. I said that's not a realistic timeline, Mike, because assuming right. town it's, meeting day is the beginning of March, you need to warn right. that a month ahead of time. It's a really long motion. I think tying it to the report. Sorry, I didn't raise my hand, Roger. Is confusing, no, but no. I will move that for the payment policy um, for special articles. So this was what like eleven through twenty this year. Um, Waterbury adopts the policy to inform all folks after the town meeting vote has happened, which Karen, you already do via email, or does someone after the budget passes? No, they all ask. They all they ask. ask, okay. I might propose in the motion That's that fine. we notify them, <laughs> that special warrants are notified, must provide an invoice by November 30th. Um, if they don't provide an invoice, we will pay, but they need to petition to get back on the next year. Um, All right. And <laughs> more? 
So we're going to oh, remove them so by the, by when? <laughs> would be for the upcoming town meeting year because also I'm just acknowledging out loud for folks that the town operates on a calendar fiscal year so the end of our year is December Karen's indicating she makes many of these payments in December in hopes of having an invoice to help facilitate that process we are telling folks if when the town meeting budget passed and indicating they have to pass and give us an invoice by November 30th that's a carrot so that they don't need to petition to get back on next year I, I have no problem with your, your 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 revised motion. I withdraw my motion. All right. Well, yours wasn't seconded. Uh, so, and are you seconding? This I'm one? seconding Alyssa's motion. Okay. Are you clear on this one? I think so. Yeah. All right. It's moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that uh, motion carries. All right, we'll now move on to the rental property ordinance. It was introduced uh, last meeting. And, uh, I think the purpose here is to go through it. We did receive quite a bit of uh, feedback at the last meeting. Um, and section by section I guess I would just acknowledge I had some feedback on like particular line items in the purpose of the last meeting so I would just note this has the full text we were presented at the last meeting as far as I'm aware is that correct yeah. so just to say the last meeting was our first full group discussion of this mm -hmm. the housing task force provided a recommendation for um, regulating both um, sorry for creating a registry for long and short-term rentals in the town of Waterbury, right. importantly, without <clears throat> regulatory implication. So that would just help gather data on them. Tom and other staff looked at proposals from other communities, which do a wide variety of things, both that particular thing of creating a registry for long and short-term rentals, but also in many other communities address a variety of other problems um, or concerns in communities regarding housing. Um, so in my mind, we have a menu of those things that we could look at. We received feedback at the last meeting about that. Um, so you also mentioned, Roger, wanting to allow time for folks to continue to provide feedback. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I would say we heard strong feedback. There was an additional proposal regarding the regulation of security deposits. Um, which was a separate consideration that we do have the allowance as a board to do, um, but was not part of that task force recommendation. Um, we certainly heard feedback regarding that at the last meeting. Um, my personal thought would be, I think it's important we proceed with a registry. One of the biggest purposes is just getting better data because we just don't know what's out there. So when we're talking about how housing availability and supply is being impacted. Um, we just have folks uh, providing all sorts of anecdotes, but right now it's all anecdotes because we don't, um, again, Joe and the housing task force, Joe is the chair, he's here, I think in the back, um, digs through like any data he can get his hands on, um, but there is some still gaps around knowing how many short-term rentals are here, how many long-term rentals are here, where they are, what type of housing they are, who owns them. Um, so the goal of registry is to try and get some of those answers. Um, so I think that's important. I am a member of the housing task force. I voted in support of that proposal. But um, my proposal would be to, to have a limited um, registry that is just doing those things. I think our goal is to get more information. I think that's really all we're 
I'm interested in doing at this point, recognizing we're doing a lot of work around housing, so there's other projects we're doing at looking at like building new housing and zoning updates and a whole platter and menu of housing things. In my mind, a registry is a new and different thing, and so I would like to see it be accessible, recognize it's gonna take a lot of property owner outreach to get it up and running, um, so would like to see it be as straightforward and easy to use and not have any reason someone wouldn't want to register. Again, the goal not being that we're changing someone's behavior, just that we're understanding it. Um, to further emphasize, so uh, to that, I would probably take this proposal minus the lockbox um, and minus the security deposits for long-term rentals. Again, just recognizing the scope of this is getting more information um, and I would propose a zero dollar fee. But again, those would be my proposals for discussion at a next meeting. Um, and I think we can shorten the purpose statement. Sorry for the monologue. Much appreciated. Do you have a chance for input? Uh, sure. So something I noticed on um, oh. the registry. Please come up, sir. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Mostly just for the same. Something I noticed on the registry. Uh, Toggle items, right? Toggle items, yep. Yeah. Uh, denotes enforcement. And then it also has penalties assigned to it. And all we're talking about, I mean, it's just constantly repetitive, is about affordable housing. I like your idea of not throwing a fee on it because that's definitely going to keep uh, landlords away. Or it's going to trickle down to a greater expense to tenants. Ultimately, they're not going to eat a registration fee. Uh, they'll pass that down and there goes you know, a larger uh, uh, monthly rent. So then on section f or page four here, underneath uh, enforcement, I don't know if this is just a copy and paste mistake, but I would not want enforcement from the Stowe fire chief. Yeah, that was draft one. That's not in today's version. But okay, yeah, I didn't see yeah. today's version. Stowe's, okay. Stowe and Waterbury on this issue share the same attorney, and, and so we, we are quite comfortable with their enforcement language. And that's fine, but it's not. Who would be Correct. providing that enforcement? It'd be the, the, the new draft would be the myself and the fire, or the fire chief. Okay, from Waterbury. Okay. Thank you. Yes, King. Tom, how much were the proposed fees so potential, there's, potentially? There's no fees in the ordinance. The fees, according to state statute, are supposed to be tied to the cost of the ordinance and the regulation itself. Um, in this case, how much time is it going to take to administer the ordinance? It's not really clear. Um, we're setting up um, you know, an online permitting system, which we would also use for this, but we didn't buy that software for this purpose. Um, you know, it's certainly going to take some staff time, but it's really hard to give any estimate of that. Um, and what I'm told from other communities are that um, the Airbnbs and VRBOs of the world have gotten good at getting their members to fill out the form. So. It's going to take some effort. I'm not convinced it's going to be a Herculean effort. You know, I could probably come back a year after a registry is adopted and give you some some fine tuning to that. But I don't think it's going to be an astronomical amount of, of time. Um, I don't think it's going to be any any actual cash beyond staff time. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, How you doing? My name is Nelson Longford. I've been a landlord slash tenant advocate for 48 years. Uh, a lot of people are setting up registries. The state's probably gonna end up setting up one. Um, there was two or three items here that kind of caught my attention is uh, the first one would be the fact that you'd be given a key to private property to somebody that isn't on the lease. That's uh, that would be the fire chief and yourself. Are you talking about the lockboxes? Lock yeah, you want lockbox on there with a house key. Um, 
So there would be numerous people that would have access to that key. You got the whole fire department, police department, on and on. So my question is, do you understand the liability you're getting into, for one? Because once you have access to that house, and with that many people, what's going to happen when somebody makes a copy of it? They go in and rob the place. Maybe rape the tenant. Who knows? How's that going to be? Are these people going to be bonded? Like most landlords have to be now? I mean, these are one of the issues, a big one. I mean, that's a, I mean, a lot of towns, you say a lot of towns are setting this up. I think it's only 10 out of the 247 towns. I haven't read Chester's thing. Uh, very few of them, Montpelier included, which has drawn up a real and extensive ordinance. We'll see how that plays out. And uh, they don't have any keys, lock boxes, or any of that. I think that's opening up a big can of worms. Um, that's one issue. The other issue would be the 45 minutes from the property. 24-7, you're going to make these mom-and-pop landlords be chained to within 45 minutes of that property. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even think that's legal. Say anything about it. So that's a huge issue. First of all, I want to ask why. Give me an example of why that person would have to be so called to that property. First off, you don't have to be there. You've got to be reachable. Okay. So that's that's the intent. Well, that that the that, ordinance is talking about forty-five minutes to thirty minutes, possibly an hour. That's what it's, that's what it reads. So therefore, you're going to put a time of a person has to be within that distance. <laughs> it's, again, it's, it's reachable. That's not reasonable at all. No, no, reachable. no reachable. Not, not the person has to be there physically. Be there, but you've got to be. Well, but but what it reads is they would have to come to that property within a reasonable period of time of 30, 45 minutes to an hour. Well, Shall respond see. its definition of designated responsible minutes. person, top of three. Mm -hmm. I think it's on page mm -hmm. two. Yeah, we're at the top of page oh, three. Yeah. Page, three, page three. three. Addition. Um, the designated responsible person fire. shall respond within 45 minutes of notification by a Waterbury firefighter or the RPA should it. So, so I think I think respond, the intent is just, just to, we need someone to reach. And the simple example is alarm calls where there's no actual fire, but there's an alarm going off, which eventually which gets its way to our fire department, and it would be nice for them to have way to deal with that alarm. Now we're talking mostly with commercial buildings. Most most short-term rentals are not commercial buildings mm -hmm. with fire alarms going off. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're really dealing with we're back to mom and pop landlords, which 90% <coughs> are in the state of Vermont. It was 95, but you know, they've been whittling that down. So, I mean, that, you know, that's kind of an issue. Um, the other item, of course, is putting the name of the owner on the building. In the, today's day and age, nobody wants their name out there with the phone number and all that stuff. And, and I don't, and there again, I ask why. If you're going to have a registry, you got their phone number, their email, um, anybody 911 number, you're going to be able to get a hold of these people. Mm -hmm. And anybody can go access today and know any property who owns it. Mm -hmm. You name a property, I can get it in a few minutes. So I, I don't see where the name on the property, 
I think it'd be a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, uh, the other issue is you mentioned, uh, Miss Johnson, that it's just going to be a registry. However, in here, you're going to sign a minister, uh, administer that can change anything at will. Um, Once you have the registry and the ordinance put in place, um, so then, I, then, then you're going to give them uh, power to change it as they will. So is that correct? No. I would say well, that's not the intent, that's and this not isn't. The intent, no, but that's and what's this, in here. Understood. So thank you. The goal okay. of tonight is to solicit feedback okay. on this. So I Great. appreciate you being here yeah. and raising these sure. points because, in considering the administration, we've heard from some folks, but not all folks. Mm -hmm. So, so what's the, I would say what's the, the what's so, the timeline you think on getting this completely approved? We had asked for at least a month of comment, and that was from a, our prior meeting. So you were ready to vote tonight? Or no, no we, it's been we were, two next weeks. meeting. Next meeting. No. no. It was just for more discussion and input. Okay. Because I mean, you know, everybody is getting into this, but you need to kind of try to have it be accepted and, right. you know, work for everybody. Exactly. Great. Tell me something. You said administrator that can change things. I'm, I'm well, not quite sure. Uh, let me see here. Administrator, manager notes. Per the town charter, the select board will not have to designate a staff person to administrate the ordinance. Uh, next one down: rental property registration. Town manager and subject to the requirements of this ordinance may be administratively modi modified from time to time. And that for the that's a change board. at will without much input from the select board. I believe that is for the registry form. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's not the ordinance itself. That's okay. just the, the questions. Well, I just asked. received this about three hours ago. I understand. So, so, yeah. But so, yeah. Yeah, I don't have the authority to change an ordinance. Only the select board can do that. I would have the authority to appoint the person in town hall who does the work. Now, what about the, in, in your, is there anything in here that, uh, regulates inspections and all that stuff. There is not. Waterbury does not have building code. Again, this is a baby step for our yeah. municipality. Sure. Just recognizing, I just want to acknowledge, I've been on the select board for two and a half yeah. years, and we have residents who come in and say, yeah. oh my goodness, there's an out of control situation at a short term rental in our neighborhood. Yeah. We're doing a comprehensive sure. zoning rewrite sure. that's taken seven years to well, do, <laughs> and that board hasn't felt like yeah. they've had the tools and distinction but, to address where this happens. But it also looks like you want to, this thing to morph into long-term registrations, of course, along with that, because other things. I mean, this looks to be like kind of a door that's going to open up a crack and turn into being open all the way. Uh, so I'm just, uh, you know, most associations I belong to and have for, like I said, 48 years. Most are not against the register. Okay, because it actually will help that side because then they got hired figures. Uh, and, but most of them, including the state, have been wanting to make the health officer the inspector. And they're not geared up for it. It's the fire prevention, the state fire prevention. They're, they've been geared up. They're, you know, a tenant calls state fire marshal, they'll be there the next day. I mean, there's already quite a, you know. Um, that's about it for me. Uh, just for the record, it's Nelson Lyford. Nelson Lyford. Yeah. How do you spell that, sir? L-Y-F-O-R-D. Yeah, and I think uh, just our interest is really to promote more long-term rentals in water. You know, it's a big issue. It is. I mean, the whole thing is, you know, the whole state of my issue with rentals is an issue. I mean, we have 80,000 rentals in the state of Vermont. There was 70,000 tenants. In the last five years, we've gained 5,000. Mm -hmm. And those 5,000 are the people that have moved in here for jobs, they are looking for short term, under 12 months, because they're going to buy a house. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I don't understand why you have a lot of seasonal rentals in this town. I mean, we're like we're like we were we're like the second largest in the country with 17,000 second homes. People won't rent them out because they can't evict people to use them in the summer. I've been trying to get the state to put a slot rental. So you have to rent for at least 90 days for less than nine months. And you collect your rooms and meals tax, but they can be given a 30 days uh, eviction notice with a sheriff's eviction. Mm -hmm. You know how many people would turn around and eat up that 5,000 of short-term tenants that way and keep their family camp? There would be a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, these are the things. There's a whole bunch of things. Um, but anyway, that's all I was concerned with. And uh, the other thing is, now Mount Perry, they put theirs out to vote. Mm -hmm. You're going to do yours by ordinance. Right. Wow. And do you think that's a fair thing to the town? I'm just asking. In one way it's better this way, another way it's better the other way. Right. Well, again, this is a registry. Um, we do think it's uh, the way to go, but uh, that's why we're here, we're here taking testimony. Personally, I think you ought to take more time to get more information out to your townspeople mm -hmm. and get more input. But thank you very much for your okay. time. Thank you. I also have this woman who raised her hand before, so. Um, Take her and then we'll go to Zoom. I'll try to be brief. Thank you. Uh, my name is Georgianne, G-E-O-R-G-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, Baker. And I live on Union Street. So um, I have to echo some of this gentleman's um, concerns and specifically about the fire department. Um, I having any entity outside my family or people I deem appropriate for access to my home concerns me. Um, I, you know, I have a lot of questions about that. You know, where would the, uh, who would have access? Um, do firefighters have background checks, you know? Um, yeah, they're wonderful people and I appreciate all that they do, but I don't know them all. So that's one issue I have. Um, I also feel that if this is about safety for pe the inhabitants in the building, either short term or long term, then this committee should be considering putting lock boxes on every home in this town. Um, honestly, I would not hold it against the fire department if they took an ax to my front door if my house was burning down. And if that's the reason, you know, they're suggesting this, then um, take the ax. Uh, just the, it just feels so police state oriented to me. It really feels heavy handed. Um, I, I'm curious about um, whether this ordinance it's just to have a sense of um, housing, you know, how many short-term, long-term, um, uh, single inhabitant homes. Uh, is it about gathering information or is it about pushing an agenda uh, regarding affordable housing, um, regarding um, more housing of any kind in our town? And if it is, I, I, as a taxpayer and a lifetime resident of Waterbury, feel really uncomfortable with that. I am the only person, my husband and I are the only people who pay for the improvements of our historic home on Union Street. We are the only people who pay the taxes, the insurances, and we have insurances galore to take care of the Airbnb, to take care of our personal property and our home. We've done what we feel is our due diligence. I was a long-term renter for 25 years. Um, 
we went to short-term rental about five years ago um, to have more flexibil flexibility in our home. Um, we want to be able to offer that space in our home to friends, out-of-town friends or family. Um, but also, it generates more money for us. It's a financial burden, to be perfectly honest, it's a financial burden to have a long-term rental. And if things are pushed upon me, I may not have any rental. I'll just leave that space empty. Um, you know, it, it allows us to pay our taxes and to make expensive home improvements to keep up a house on a street in the town so that people passing by or neighbors don't look at it and say, boy, that's going to shit. Excuse my French. <laughs> but let's face it, do I want my neighbor's house to look bad? No, I want him or her to be keeping it up as well um, because that's part of being in a neighborhood. And there's just a couple of questions which feel free to answer now or send me um, some information later. Um, has anybody uh, considered the revenue from short-term short -term visitors to local businesses and how if we closed our doors, how that's going to impact? And I myself as a full-time resident do not go out every weekend, three nights a week and buy dinner, right? These people are doing that. They're drinking the beer in town. They're going to the wine cellar in town. They're spending a lot of money because it's their vacation. Um, I don't think if I had a long-term resident there that they would be putting as much money in as multiple short-term rental uh, folks do. Um, and I'm a teacher, so I'm big into data. And... Um, it's the way you show improvement, right? It's quantifiable. And so has data been collected about parking issues, garbage, noise? And I mean like numbers, not someone came in and told us it's been terrible near my house. The noise is crazy. You know, that's anecdotal. Right. So I would want to see more data. Um, and the name of my property, if people are curious who lives there, I have a big B on the front. It stands for Baker. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to take uh, someone online, and then we'll get back to, to in person. Tom, you have uh, something to say? One, one quick thing. Um, Alyssa made a statement at the beginning about not being in favor of the, um, the lockbox section. Correct. Um, I drafted this up. I got some input from the fire chief. If the board is not in favor of that section, you don't need to hear that from everyone tonight. Mm -hmm. You can simply say right now, let's just go ahead and strike that section and move on if that's your desire and if that's the sentiment you're hearing. Uh -huh. yep. We have heard a bunch of feedback on that. Uh, do I have a motion? I move to strike the lockbox section from the rental ordinance. I'll second it. Move and second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so lockbox has been stricken from this proposed ordinance. Um, there's a woman named, or, excuse me, an individual named Vivian who had trouble raising her hand, but has a comment. Okay, Vivian? I'm oh, sorry, yeah, Vivian. Is that Todd, maybe? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. Is it Vivica? Yeah. yeah. Can Vivica. You, oh, hi. It's, it's actually sure. my pseudo name. I'm Valerie Rogers. South Main oh. Street. Oh. <laughs> it's just my, like, you know, when I want to, like, stay private. I had a question oh, yeah. about um, why this is coming up because is there was there an event that happened that has asked, that has, like, precipitated this lockbox or uh, registry, like what happened that has asked that makes them want to have a registry where they know where everybody is? Was there an event? Is there a problem you're trying to solve, or are you just trying to be preemptive? I'm going to uh, ask uh, Alyssa to address this. This was a recommendation that came to us 
from the housing task force? I would say the response has been a desire from the planning commission to note that they wanted to see the select board look into initially short-term rentals, probably five years ago when I was on the planning commission. And I would say from there, the planning commission hasn't had the capacity to do that. In that time, we stood up a housing task force and one of the, its first initiatives was to look into that. I'll own right now, we have really great data and it's not all posted on the website, so I will make sure that's there, but that actually informed how we got to the place we are now. Because it started with, I have concerns about short-term rental. And then as many folks have commented here tonight, there was also discussion about the significant benefits of short-term rentals in our community. So, in particular, in considering this approach, the goal was to understand comprehensively rentals, to not be treating short-term rentals differently than long-term rentals, because again, as many folks have talked to, those interact in all sorts of different ways. So I would just say the goal of this is to gain more data because we do want to be data driven. There is data, it is largely census estimates that go in five year increments and or statewide data that goes out to the county or sometimes local level. Um, so we've pulled as much of that as we can, we've compiled as much as that and it still hasn't given us answers to questions about is there impacts, positive or negative, or how might we most effectively help with the housing issue in Waterbury? Someone also asked about a goal. I guess I would just say, we have a town plan. It's also in the charge of the housing task force. And the goal, let me quote it from the website, is to advance goals in the Waterbury municipal plan, which are to ensure the availability of safe, decent, and affordable housing for all current and future Waterbury residents and create housing in locations that are in like downtowns. But those are, so in terms of like what goal or agenda, the goal of this is to further those goals around making sure that folks who live here right now or want to live here have a safe, decent, and affordable based on their salary place to live. So just right. to I say I think that like, what you're saying is important, but what I was asking about, why is there this push for a registry to make sure that I am available at all times? I am a long-term landlord long-term rentals for 25 years plus and i have never had a problem with my landlords i have not heard of a problem where somebody can't reach somebody there hasn't been a fire or a break-in so i'm just wondering what precipitated this intense list so what i will say is i'm a long-term landlord long-term rentals and i don't understand this what's going on so i will just say thank you very much for your efforts but i don't understand the registry at all Would it be easier if you didn't combine a registry with your ordinance? This, the, the topic says rental. Uh, hold on, Tom. Uh, okay. I was going to respond to Valerie simply by saying we have already struck the lockbox language from the ordinance just now. Um, so it would no longer apply if it were passed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tom, you have something to <laughs> Yeah, the top just, Come to up, clear, just for the respectfully. 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 You come forward, that's the way these <laughs> meetings work. Respectfully, that's the way it works. I get it, Roger. Thank you. So, would it be easier if the topic of discussion wasn't rental property ordinance? Because that's what's clearly on here. What you want is a registry. That's what I heard. Now, the other thing is, and Tom, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but we do have a representative in town is a sponsor of House 276, the act relating to creating a rental housing registry. If we do it here, and the state does it, and we make ours too intrusive, we'll be doing backwards. I don't think 276 survived crossover. Well, it probably didn't, Ken. But the problem is, wait, have you listened to these? I mean, have you sat through when they, when they have this debate over a state act that could be a law. Have you have you done that? No. Yeah. Okay. So, do you notice who's in the room? I would assume legislate legislators and lawyers. Yeah. We don't have that here, and I know you you've passed that by people. But what you've heard, I'm not I, I'm not a landlord, but I have been a long term renter. I mean, until I was 40 years old, I didn't own a house. Okay. So I know what the feeling is. But I, I just I would really really caution against doing something that's going to have you do cheetah flips backwards. If, if you talk about, uh, in just one last comment, 
Eight second airborne has a one hour recall. Eight second airborne when they're on DRB, right? Why would we ever expect a landlord to have a one hour recall? I, I get it, the contact, but I'm just saying those troops have to be by their phone, right? It, it, if you look at that, pushing people into that kind of environment, it is intrusive, right? The renters don't have that same recall, right? So just be, be advised. I, I understand the intent. You don't want out-of-state landlords, right? Is that pretty much? No, I think you just want to be able to reach a landlord when there's a problem. Yeah, but I've heard previous select board meetings where you said there's people scooping up property that are out-of-state, that are now hold the data on that because it was available. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. I've I've seen. I've actually listen. I, I actually do my homework. Believe it or not, I do, I do look at. But I would just very, very much. I I, I like what um, Valerie said. It it comes down to what problem I'm trying to solve. And what I heard a lot about was registry. So ask ask. I, I'm not a landlord. How many? I, I'm gonna put you on the spot. How many rental units do you have? Uh, Tom, uh, Tom. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. Now. Can you I'm ask me? I'm just going to respond one thing. First of all, on the landlord <coughs> tenant advocate, what's good for the tenant is good for the landlord. What's good for the landlord is good for the tenant. This is the problem that the whole state is not keeping in focus. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Agreed. Sorry, can't ask him a question. <laughs> but I, I, I just think you have the opportunity to ask landlords right. and we've been doing questions. That. That's and, why and, and that almost becomes a registry, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say survey monkey. <laughs> you could probably get a lot of visibility on how many actual rent. I mean, you did it for revitalizing Waterbury when you did 51 South Main. We hired a contractor to find out how many rental units, and albeit it was a New York contractor during COVID, right? But we came up with data there somehow, mm -hmm. right? Do we not? Uh, just, updating the data a, using that methodology. I just only okay. say if they did MLS data, that's what me and Joe and Owen met on Wednesday in the municipal building, okay. and I have a spreadsheet to data enter. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, it's, it's, I, I apologize. I'm not, I'm, just, I'm not trying to get anybody fired up, and, and if it sounds like I'm fired up, I'm really not. I'm just saying what I heard over and over again is landlords come, don't, don't pit landlords against tenants, and I, I, I respect what he said so much. Because I was a renter. Don't, don't, when you do stuff like this. I'm currently a renter on a month-to-month -month lease, just for the public record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> as I have been as long as uh, I've lived here. I've settled. I've settled. Um, I don't know if it's Whitney or Wade. Uh, access? Can I just Whitney or Wade? Uh, Tom, go ahead. Just, just a comment uh, to Mr. Gore. Um, so first off, um, the 45-minute rule. There, there's no pride of authorship in my case in this ordinance. I was just directed to draft an ordinance. And... All the ordinances I could find had either 30 minutes or one hour. I chose the middle as a, as a, as a draft. It's not even a recommendation. Um, but, so I just want to make that clear. Um, I got a question. The, hang one on just second. a minute. Um, <clears throat> the other piece that people, people referred to about the intrusiveness, um, there's no requirement in the ordinance that you've got to post your address and your name. Sorry, you've got to post your name outside your house. Just says the owner's name's got to be in a conspicuous location. So I think that can be interpreted a lot of different ways. Maybe that needs some clarity. The part you said about the legislature and, and their, their bill and their rental registry, uh, that's been in the works for and debated for a long time. And, and the one thing I will say clearly to the select board is if there's an issue they want to address in Waterbury and they can address it, it's a good idea to consider addressing it rather than rely on the state legislature. And, and I, I love our legislators, but my view of the state legislature, whether it's Vermont or New York or Florida or the US Congress, is don't rely on action until it's occurred and signed into law. Until then, you do your best. Um, I think that's a good rule to follow in general. So they might enact their own registry, and it could be vastly different from ours, but ordinances can be rescinded just as they can be adopted. And sometimes you have to do that. So it's, it's a valid point, but I just don't think you can rely on the state. I mean, there are bills that, for those of us that follow the state legislature, that every year we think certain no-brainer bills will pass, and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. Um, and sometimes there are really, really important bills that pass 
in a matter of a few weeks, and they weren't even introduced at the start. And that may happen this year in education funding. So I just don't think you can count on the legislature um, in advance. Uh, Wade or Whitney? Hi there, this is Whitney Aldridge, small business owner, resident of the town. We have an ADU that we use as a short-term rental. I agree with all points on uh, from George Ann Baker, and I can actually say that a large percentage of our guests in the last couple of years were here looking at real estate to buy. Um, so I just want to also add that to the, to the mix of who is coming and what are they doing here. Just want to say a big thank you to the Housing Task Force, Alyssa, especially you. Um, appreciate the time and effort you guys make, but please have patience with those of us that don't have the deep well of knowledge and experience with this topic like you guys do. My one point I want to make is, um, well, really the question is about the registry, registry fee. If there is one, um, is there a way to work with the state to use the room and meals tax that's already being collected from us to help fund the registry instead of having a separate tax or fee? That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. In the back. My name is Ben. I live on Union Street. Um, what's your last, last name? Ben Gernand. G-E-R-N-A-N-D, 34 Union Street. I've been here for an hour and 13 minutes with my phone on silent. Out of respect for the room, I'm in violation. If I'm in a movie, if I'm fighting a fire, there's a lot of things that turn my phone off. Doesn't make sense. Um, why does this registry slash ordinance have to be an every year thing? If you just want the data, do it one time. Why is there a fee for me to give you information? That doesn't make sense. Okay, yes, Pam. Yeah, I'll get the room. Sorry. I will. I guess. My name is Sabine Kim. I am a Massachusetts resident with a vacation rental home in Waterbury since 2005. So I'm a short term rental operator. But I'm here tonight. Please, they're, they're asking in the back. Sorry. Just, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I know that I have a low voice. So I'm sorry. Um, I start all over. My name is Sabine Kim. I am a Massachusetts resident with a second home in Waterbury since 2005 that we've been renting out. But tonight, I'm not here as a short-term rental host, but as a board member of the Vermont Short-Term Rental Alliance uh, that exists since three years uh, to represent the interests of short-term rental hosts and operators, as well as be a network facility to bring people together and be an educator. Um, I hope you received my email that I sent you guys this morning. Um, with regards to the registry, the position of Vistra is in support of a registry on a state level. So, um, I commend you actually for the work that you have been doing. I have, I remember during the COVID days when the government, the state of Vermont was trying desperate to get hold of us operators to communicate with us what we could and couldn't do. The, uh, since those days, the idea of having contact information of us hosts has been around. Um, we personally feel it's important to have a, a place that actually collects facts and data to make decisions based on so that policies can be formed out of Informed, informed, informed facts, not out of emotions. So that's point one in support of the registry in, in Waterbury. Um, the lockbox tissue is off the table, obviously. <laughs> I would have shared that this is an outdated concept. Um, many of us have keypads, uh, lock, I mean, entry lock, mm -hmm. not, not keys electronic. to get in, but actually electronic. Um, I would also like to state that for the past five years, we have been trying to work with the highest fire person in Vermont, Mr. DeRosier, um, educating him on how far technologies of smart homes have evolved to make homes mm -hmm. safer. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. DeRosier has had zero interest in engaging in any kind of discussion with us or learning about it. It seems he's just ready for retirement and not ready to learn where 21st century home automation software is. We have I live in Massachusetts. As soon as a smoke alarm goes off in my home, my phone rings. Sure. I have video cameras around the house. I have 
measures of if over occupancy is there. Um, there is many tools that we have um, that make some of the suggestions that are coming with this ordinance a little bit worthy to look at alternative solutions that can be used. Um, I think there was a third point that I had, so lockbox, uh, the 40, 45 minutes. So working with a property management company based in Stowe, just along the commute time to get to Waterbury. There is nobody here that does the kind of service that I try to, that I, that I recruit. Um, 45 minutes is unreasonable. And again, with a video camera, a ring doorbell, you can literally call me on the premise and I can be on the phone anywhere in the world as long as I'm having my phone on. Those are my five cents. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Oh, and we are required to list contact information on the premise by short-term regulations in the state of Vermont. So on here, this should, every short-term rental host should have this in their, apart, in their listing, in their house. Contact information of the owner, um, where um, smoke, uh, smoke detectors are, where fire extinguishers are. So there's a whole battery of things that exist already, just the education is missing to implement it. Mm -hmm. And just one quick question. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if you can't get hold of somebody in 45 minutes and they don't answer, is this the fine structure you're going to get under this proposal? Yes, it's strictly interpreted. But, so, if but for some reason you can't get a hold of me, I'm out, whatever, deep sea fishing, or whatever, because you already said you don't have to be within 45 minutes of the flight, or I don't have cell service. <laughs> we're going to get fine. Again, it's strictly interpreted. Yes. We, have, we have a number of ordinances on the books when, when fines can occur, they very rarely occur. Well, no, but they're on the book and it's a possibility up to the discretion of whoever's handling it. That's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the devil's in the details, I find. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm going to go uh, online and then we'll come back to the uh, room. John Grenier. John? Hi, sorry. This is actually Nicole Grenier. Um, John Grenier is with me. We're on his laptop. <laughs> so yeah. I just want to say, um, I'll try to be succinct because I appreciate all of your time and want to leave time for anybody else who would care to speak. John and I are both uh, reluctant landlords. Uh, we are both residents of Waterbury and business owners in Waterbury. Uh, in 2021, um, we became reluctant landlords by way of the building that my business is housed in, um, us being notified by our then landlord that she was ready to sell. And had we not scrambled uh, to purchase the building, we were, of course, concerned that we might uh, lose uh, the opportunity to stay in that address, um, thinking that another buyer might price us out of a reasonable rent, um, realizing also that our neighbor, Bridgeside Books, as well as the long-term rental apartment upstairs, and the Airbnb short-term rental that she had upstairs were all sort of in the mix, as well as the property next door, which is also a long-term rental. So that means that John and I, in buying the building, became uh, landlords for two long-term rental units and one short-term rental unit. We chose to keep the short-term rental just to see how things went. Our reality is that the short-term rental allows us to increase fees when things get tight. And I will tell you month to month, it is a stretch to cover all of the expenses that we bear as landlords and business owners. So we use that little Airbnb, it's a one bedroom, um, for tourists who rent it pretty consistently, frankly. And we're able to increase that rent in order to avoid raising the rents for our long-term renters and to keep those rents affordable for our local folks. Without that short-term rental, I don't know how that would play out for us in our ability to sustain the way that we have been trying to be as good landlords as we can be. I will say that with the ordinance, um, John and I are both uh, mostly in support. Um, certainly the registry, we believe that we do need to have data as a next important step in order to move toward affordable housing in Waterbury. We thank you for um, uh, 
voting against the lockbox that felt a bit intrusive uh, as responsible landlords we do feel it's necessary for us to be mm -hmm. available or designate someone in our absence should we not be available um, we certainly would prefer not to have the fee and I know points have been made that those fees that are incurred by landlords are likely to be passed on to renters and so we certainly want to avoid that as well um, okay. I think that's it. I want to thank you for uh, your time and attention and for letting me share and for um, all of your thoughtfulness and as we move forward. Sure, Nicole, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I think Chris had his hand up first and then we'll go. So I've been sitting here listening to all the conversation here tonight and uh, Chris Fiennes, by the way. I want to express my condolences to the board for being so patient and understanding dealing with what appears to be a lot of frustration. <clears throat> but what I want everybody to understand is that the board's been tasked to undertake this issue of trying to figure out why we have transitioned so much from long-term rentals to now short-term rentals, Airbnbs and such. Um, it's almost like it's a self-fulfilled prophecy. For years and years and years in the state, we have promoted as our, our state as a place to come and visit. The consequence of that is be, that everybody has come and visited here for so long that now, be, due to the pandemic, uh, the rush to come here to, for a safe haven was one of the issues, uh, which has driven up the cost of housing and, and the cost of living here in general has driven up the desire to take advantage of what has come to fruition in the short-term rental business as a lucrative way of paying your property taxes and helping people stay here and afford to live here. Consequently, burdening many of the others that have it, have, don't have the income or don't have the ability to be able to keep up with that demand and, and, and compete with the, the, the large amounts of money that's coming here from out of state. So this is a result of, of, of like I said, a, a, a many issues that have converged on this, the little state of Vermont of which we were unprepared for, I believe. Uh, so it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, I mean, and when it comes to long-term rentals versus short-term rentals, I was told earlier today that a three-day, a two-day rental, a three-day rental yielded 1,600 bucks through the through the eclipse uh, event. You can't make that. You can't make that in a month. You make it, yeah, and you make it in three days. Excuse me, not everyone. Yeah. No, 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 I understand. Yeah. So, so I'm that's what's, that's what's driving, that's what's driving this transition. And how do you, how do you deny something like that? You know, it's difficult. So, uh, I, I appreciate everybody's patience and please understand that the select board here is to try to solve a problem that everybody seems to be concerned with. So, uh, they've got their hands. Thank you. Roger. I'm Lisa Walton. I live up on Flush Hill. Um, I can see both sides. I've been on both sides, and I can make arguments for both sides. Um, I would love to see more long-term rentals and less short-term rentals just for the sake of people being able to find a place to live, so I'm totally on board with that. The, con the question that I have and the connection that I can't seem to make is how does having a registry lead to helping to solve the affordability problem that we have with housing. In other words, once you have all the data that you'd like to collect, we have a general sense of how many rentals are. All I do is look up the short-term rental platforms and get an idea of how many rentals there are, and I think it's crazy how many rentals there are. But how do we justify the legit, how do we justify having a registry? I don't, I can't connect how once you have a registry, we're then able to solve the problem or, 
or lead to some solutions? Oh, and there's, there's a lot of ways to answer that, but I think the first part is that we're trying to get some data so we can really understand it, and we all have our own assumptions. I mean, a lot of people, I think, have an assumption that with the growth of short-term rentals, that's directly reduced the number of long-term rentals, and I'm not sure that's true. I'm not sure it's not true, but we don't have to get it one way or the other. So getting the data in year one is great, but getting it in years two, three, four, and five, I think, is even better. So we will to see, are the number of long-term rentals in the town, is it going up, down, or not moving at all? Um, so having that data, I think, over time is more and more valuable. Second part is I'll use Woodstock as an example. Um, in Woodstock, um, they put forth a series of incentives um, to try to encourage more long-term rentals. Um, so maybe that's something that the board would consider at a later date once we have the data. There's Back in, I believe, October, the board adopted a policy related to the local option tax and how that would be spent, and part of that is encouraging affordable housing. And so maybe that tax will be in place soon if there was a registry and better data. Maybe that would help them fine-tune their approach as to how they do that. Um, maybe maybe giving $100,000 to Downstreet for 26 units at one lot was a good approach, but maybe in fact there's, there's smaller ways they can do it that influence the market. So I think just that data gives you something to work with and something to understand over time and knowing how it and knowing how the market changes over time could also be really valuable. We could I mean we could be in a situation in ten years when the market's reversed. We we don't know. Um, I think ten years ago no one envisioned the growth of short term rentals that we've had. So I think just getting the data and then having even more important than year one, but years two, three, and four to see how the market's changing is going to be of value to the board. Uh, and I appreciate what you're saying. I I would like us to incentivize people to um, put their units up for a longer term rather than a shorter term rental, and I'm all for that. But I, I still feel like having a registry, I, I'm still not able to understand once you have that data how that really can translate directly. You can have some idea, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really change too much what your plan is going to be to try and fix the problem. So I do think it's it's somewhat of an infringement on people's rights and privacy not to have everybody know that necessarily they have a short-term or a long-term rental for a lot of reasons, and I think that the board should consider that. Um, and maybe what somebody suggested, not having this be an all the time thing, but every few years, maybe they ask people to step forward and provide the information. So asking for it rather than requiring for it, that information. That's, again, my concern. I don't have a horse in the race at the moment, but I can certainly understand why people have concerns on both sides. So, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe. Good evening. I'm Joe Camarada. I'm chair of the Housing Task Force, and I live in Waterbury Center. And I just wanted to kind of follow up um, on what Tom said. You know, when you had your meeting on April 1st, I think it was the first person who came up and responded and said, why do we need the data? And it's a very good question to ask, you know, because, you know, I think we have some data, as Alyssa said, but we don't have everything we know. We know there's about 700 rental units in Waterbury. We know that in February there's about 188 short-term rentals. We don't know if those two overlap. We don't know if those 100 in EVH are coming at the expense of the 700 or if they're beside the 700. So I'd like to give you three possible scenarios for having more data would help us. So the first scenario is that the town owns some property or could own some property that could be developed. And they will come to the housing task force and they will say to us, what would you like us to develop? And without data to understand what we're having, and more importantly, what we might be losing out of the long-term rental market, we're not able to actually make a very informed decision in terms of what should be done. That's one reason. The second, and Tom touched on this, with the new zoning bylaws, we have an opportunity to promote and even incentivize further infill development in, in, in the town. Um, but again, should that infill development be ADUs? Should it be one bedroom ADUs? Should it be duplexes? Do we need more single houses? Again, without data, it's hard for us to know exactly how to act and, and, what, and what to focus on. It's not simply a matter of just building more. I think 
you know, Chris, you said this to me last week, we're not going to build our way out of this problem, at least not in the short term, right? So that would be it. And the third is when it comes to advocating to the state itself. The state has put together a number of programs in order to incentivize. I can't tell you whether those programs are right or not for Waterbury. Um, but if we had some data and we knew more about what housing we were losing and what we needed, we could actually go back and work with our state representatives to make sure that the programs at the state level are the ones that we need. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Um, after hearing, f first we heard about the uh, lockbox, and then th it seems that the second, the second sentence in part three of the rental property requirements is what is the biggest hang-up so far. We've heard is the designated responsible person shall respond 45 minutes of notification by Water Ready Fire Department mm -hmm. should a problem arise. I would elect that we strike that sentence but keep the remainder of part three here. Okay. Uh, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I, I, uh, yeah. I second that. All right. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any, aye. Opposed? Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. That line will construct. And uh, not so much here. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Hi, uh, Evan Hoffman. I live over on Butler Street. I just had a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, is the version of this posted on the town website the most recent draft? Mm -hmm. okay. the, the stuff I was looking at didn't quite line up with things you were saying. Mm -hmm. That's the one from April 1st? Yeah. 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 yeah, we didn't get this one up on the uh, on the website, yeah. Second, following along from what somebody said previously about privacy, who would have access to the data in the registry? Is it public? <coughs> is it town employees? Is it various boards and committees and policymakers? Can, can I just throw, uh, throw a hat in the ring here? Do you have the answer? Uh, I can, part of the answer, if you own property, your, your name is already on the grand list, right? We're just sectioning it out, you know? So it's not like you're not already, you know, it's not that a property owner isn't already listed somewhere within the town mm -hmm. with access. I mean, if you're on the grand list, I can find you on, on Google, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be <coughs> publicly accessible. Yeah, do you have a thought yeah. on that, uh, Tom? It's a good question. I'm gonna confer with council on that. And my, my instinct is most of what we're asking is publicly accessible, but the designated responsible person, um, perhaps the phone numbers, those sort of things might not, might not be. Or perhaps it would be um, an item in the registry where the owner could designate if they want that publicly accessible or not. But I'll confer with council. That's something we haven't gotten to yet, but the, the data we collect and what we do with it is, is not part of the ordinance. It's a separate piece that would be adopted by the select board later. Okay. But it's a great question. Uh, my last comment is that I think there's one very important piece of data that isn't being collected, at least as of the what is proposed in the version I was reading, and that's the price of the rental, how much it's being rented out for, either per month or per night, depending. Uh, I think that's a very important thing <coughs> that the town should be collecting. Thoughts on that? But also, of course, that would dovetail with the privacy issues. Mm -hmm. It would indeed. Uh, I think. Uh, I, I think that's um, private transaction between private individuals. I don't think that's uh, mm -hmm. our business to ask that question. I think you're right. It'd be nice to have that data. I think there's a reason the towns that have adopted these registries haven't asked the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. Thanks. All right, we are running over time. Uh, hopefully we've gotten the, enough information. Um, one thing that was brought up a lot uh, on the first, and not so much tonight, was the question of the deposit, uh, regulation on the deposit, which uh, many people had concerns about. Uh, uh, one landlord testified, testified to the effect that it would be a disincentive uh, for him to continue uh, long-term rentals if uh, it was under that uh, new regulation. He wasn't available tonight, sorry. 
Hmm? He was never home. Yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> the fact that he came last time, I, 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 my mind isn't that weak. Uh, uh, but uh, I wonder if we wanted to address that tonight. Um, I guess. Hmm? Yeah. I would propose we move forward without that. Do you want it as a motion? Um, I move that we remove regulation of security deposit section from subsequent drafts. I'll, I'll second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, I would lobby that in doing away with the deposits for long-term rental that the town create a housing trust using funds from the local option tax for the purpose of housing initiatives. Okay. I think that would be an addition to what we've proposed. I'm amenable to such a Policy change, certainly. I guess, I, how was I, before I made the motion, Roger, I guess I would say I appreciate everyone and thank you in particular, Whitney, for your framing because I do get emotional because I have lived this for seven years and it, I am the policy nerd and it does feel back of mind and I'm just reflecting and appreciating that I think we need to do a better job educating and conveying. I mean, even for the charter vote, Tom had a very comprehensive PowerPoint laying out each section of the ordinance and why it was and what data we looked at initially. So I was gonna propose that we proceed to do that, not at the next meeting, because we have bylaw hearings, mm -hmm. but at the subsequent meeting that we plan, and I'm willing to take this on, a more comprehensive proposal regarding updated draft ordinance as previously made through other motions without the lockbox, without the time requirement for the person, and assuming this motion passes, without the regulation of security deposit mm -hmm. um, for further discussion. Okay. Um, 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 Mike. Change comment about kind of a housing trust. I'm still kind of against that. I think I, I just see, and this is where I think a lot of people have expressed multiple layers of oversight, which uh, there are a number of, you know, housing trusts out there already. And and do we want in Waterbury to add another housing trust to that mix? I would be probably against that. Um, Roger, can we comment on that at all? Uh, sure. Uh, no, we're in comment no. from a motion. I was going to yeah. call the question, but I can't call my own question because that's a technicality. I think we should. <laughs> let's, 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 we've got a motion that's moved, been moved and seconded. Uh, which is to strike the uh, part. I get that uh, there, there are other interests involved, but uh, if there's more discussion pertaining to the uh, security deposit uh, regulation, I'll take that. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? One abstention. Okay, it carries. All right. Um, further discussion on this. Uh, Ken, I, I appreciate your point. Uh, I think bringing up the issue uh, around the housing trust is a good one, but it, it does seem like it's a, a sort of a separate initiative that we can we can bring forward. Sure. Okay. Um, to comment on that, the purpose of the security deposit uh, section of this ordinance was to keep at least the foot in the door affordable for renters. And if we are striking that from this ordinance and rents continue to climb, renters are going to start needing assistance mm -hmm. before the state starts coming after wages, right? Because this problem is going to climb and climb and climb and someone's going to have to pay for it one way or the other and renters can't be left out on the street. Yeah. So there is a pro 
program with the state to help with uh, the deposit um, for people that need it. They just need to apply. So there is a program through the state to help with that deposit. All right. A number of the existing um, land trusts and housing organizations also have various down payment assistance and other kinds of assistance that's out there already. And I just hate to duplicate what's out there already. Are we aware of a housing trust operating inside of Waterbury? It's downstream. Downstream, right? There's it's regional. Right, basically downstream. <laughs> I'm going to propose we move uh, to the next agenda item yeah, unless the there's other comments. Comment, and then we're going to move on, I think. Okay, so I'm, I'm curious to know if this were a, a uh, would it become a budget line item, I guess, uh, with a yearly reimbursement. Uh, I'd hate to set a precedent that <coughs> the town of Waterbury is giving last month's in security deposit uh, for renters. Uh, if there's a scenario where you were thinking that this would be paid back over time by the, the renter, um, I'd like to, if, if you did move forward with it, which I likely would oppose your efforts to do so, um, I would like to put it on a trial basis uh, because I would be fearful that a lot of times it wouldn't get paid back. Okay. Well, so is there any uh, no, further Tom, Tom uh, has a comment? Hmm? Tom has a comment. Oh yeah, Tom, go ahead. Make one suggestion, based on what I've heard, in the interest of time and maybe in the interest of of moving towards a more refined ordinance. The sentiment I seem to have heard from the board is there's interest in a in no fee, at least no fee to start. Mm -hmm. So the language here is pretty common, and it and it creates it gives you the ability to create a fee schedule. And I like the idea of fee schedules because a fee in the ordinance can only be amended by amending the ordinance. Fee schedule outside of the ordinance can be amended by the board. But if there's no interest at this time in a fee, the ordinance as drafted goes into effect January 1, 2025. I could add to it for the next reading language that would say the fee is zero until, Janu until at least January 1, 2026. You've got that full year at zero, and then at that point, we'll know how hard it is to deal with all this, and if staff feels like there should be a reasonable fee, mm -hmm. we can come back to you, but but it's, it's your, it would be zero on year one. Mm -hmm. Can I ask the registry Just, software that you plan on purchasing, is that not, are you financing this out of city budget, or um, not, I, I assume you would do that through a fee? So we, we've, we're moving and purchasing software nothing's implemented yet um, that we were doing for the for planning and zoning purposes anyway for those departments and that has the ability to incorporate a registry into it but we were making that purchase and that was a planned purchase well before this conversation so i, I can't logically say that we should reimburse ourselves mm -hmm. through the fee for that software the software in fact is going to make it a lot easier for everyone i think so if anything that'll reduce our costs and get rid of the paper All right, thank you, and thanks for all, everyone for your patience and helping us uh, get a better appreciation for how this is uh, being viewed. Uh, we're going to move forward. Um, getting back to the um, Recreation Department, uh, we have not uh, seen, or not Department, uh, but the uh, Recreation Committee. I don't know if Emma's here because I don't know Emma, but mm -hmm. I think maybe not. Emma, are you here? If not, I think we owe it to uh, everyone to at least uh, feel, and she, we, we have her uh, application, so uh, we can face uh, a motion on that as well. Um, I 
there's three full terms. Sure. This paper, maybe Alyssa said it wrong, or maybe in Marshall called me bring it wrong. She asked me in the chat if we had appointed Marty in 2027. This is 2028. My motion was to appoint for the full term. April 2028. If he wanted a shorter term, I'm amenable no, to think, that. But I, I think she was asking me to confirm it. Okay. So we're confirming that it's 2028. Yes. All right. That is confirmed. Um, do I have a motion uh, for the uh, recreation committee? It's all four openings, right? Yeah, one is an expired term. It's still my decision. So three full terms and one unexpired. Let's put uh, Brian Cook on the unexpired. I'm sorry. I'm sure it was in the No? Yeah, go ahead. Alyssa. Are you going in? Uh, no. Okay. No, you should go. Okay. Uh, I um, uh, was um, forgetting my privilege now, but nominate my uh, appoint mm -hmm. Paul Lawson. I move to, to um, excuse me, I move to appoint Paul Lawson uh, to the recreation committee um, for a full term ending April 30th, 2027. Did you want to go forward with the others or just one at a time? Um, and yeah, I'll. Um, I suppose I'll appoint uh, move Aaron, to. Uh, move to, sorry, um, appoint Brian, uh, or Aaron Starmer um, for the uh, full term ending April 30th, 2027, um, as well as Brian Cook. Um, I move to appoint Brian Cook for the full term ending April 30th, 2027. So we're out. Well, we need Emma. And then I move to appoint, I guess, Emma Lenschner um, to the full term uh, ending April 3rd of 2027. Do we have, well, are all the vacancies for 2027? Yeah, it would be three full ones. Right. So and then one unexpired term ending April 3rd of 2027. Does it make sense to move to appoint Emma Lechner to the uh, one term, one year term ending April 3rd is 2025. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. We are done with that. Um, the emergency management plan. So that was not printed for the packet, unfortunately. Okay. So it's it's Doors. taking a few minutes to run it off. Um, I can go ahead and run those off if we can move that towards the back. Sure. What it, the one that's posted? Because we're at annual update yeah, time annual. already. Yeah, we're at annual update time. Yeah. I thought you said today that you only need one minor change, so maybe you could just tell the board what it was. The wanted. only change I made to the so the only changes I made from last year and, and just just for the, the newer members, so it's an annual requirement that it's updated. There's a couple plans we have to work on. Uh, one is the local emergency management plan. That's really focused on, on local officials who are responsible during an emergency. So it's, it's in essence a big contact list. It's a major part of it. And sometimes those contacts change. So I did that internally. I sent it around to staff for some changes. Um, I think, and then I think today, I, and I sent that around on Friday. And then today I sent one more tiny revision, which is so not a new organization, but new to me, an organization called CV Dart, which I added. And CV Dart actually has the ability to um, take care of pets during an emergency. So if there's a flood and people need their pets to go somewhere, they're well cared for, and they've got a mobile trailer, hmm. which, which I just learned about, which I thought was pretty cool. So they're added to it. But it's essentially identifying local officials and who's in charge of what, and emails and phone numbers and cell phones. Um, it does make us eligible for some state funding, so to not do it. Um, at some point could be, could harm our bottom line, make us less eligible. Um, and 
the other plan we have to do that we're actually working on with Central Vermont Regional Planning, um, not to be confused with the emergency management plan, is what's called the hazard mitigation plan. Mm -hmm. And that is really more focused on um, a bit more of a natural resource focus, so it's a bit more about um, things like floods. Um, that's actually a requirement, and if that's not um, adopted and it, according to the rules, um, then in fact we would be eligible for less FEMA funds. And so would residents uh, for things like elevation projects be eligible for less FEMA funds. So that's something that we have to do. That's coming up soon because we're just about done with that. So I can run off the emergency management plans if we want. Um, what changes have you made from this April 2023 <coughs> that's currently posted? Um, Is there any substantive besides the addition CB of the Dart. pet? Yeah. Just CB Dart and changing some some cell phones and, and, and contact info for people who, who change roles. But Is but it correct meaningful. that Gary Dillon is still the emergency management director and Mike Bard is the emergency <coughs> management coordinator? Uh, until otherwise specified by the board. Okay. Um, for the purposes of compliance, I will move to adopt the updated local emergency management plan dated April 2024 with staff updates to pertinent contact information and the addition of, what is it? CV DART. CV DART. CV DART. <laughs> um, and note that we should have an annual calendar so we know what's coming every single year. Is that part of the motion? No, that's me being sassy second. Yeah, after 10 p.m. Second, second, I want, I want a calendar. Okay. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Huh? Mike has his hand up. Oh, Mike, I'm sorry. There's you don't look at the board. <laughs> No, uh, I don't. The only thing I, I would recommend, and it doesn't affect the vote, um, is that our natural disaster preparedness group be kind of put in the loop to the emergency management director, Gary Dillon, to give any input that they think is necessary, because I think that's what they're working on. And, you know, part of natural disaster preparedness is part of all part of emergency, um, you know, you know, planning. So that should be mm -hmm. a yearly checkup. All right. Uh, do we need an amendment? Or is that just a friendly amendment? No, I think that's just, just a comment. comment. I, don't think, I don't think it has to be in the, as an amendment. All right. Uh, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing and seeing none. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The emergency management plan is approved as uh, noted. Cell tower on the campus di district. We have an application from Verizon to replace the temporary tower with a more permanent tower. Well, I do remember this coming before the board uh, two years ago uh, when there was no cell connection at our Main Street firehouse, uh, which was a problem. Yeah, let me grab it real quick. In the interim, we have two planning commissioners here, and they discussed this at their meeting last Monday. I don't know if either of them okay. have any thoughts, though I know they wouldn't be on behalf of the full board. All right. I don't, we didn't receive anything from you. I'm just putting you on the spot because you're here. Too. Katie, Billy, which one of you wants to speak? They don't have to. They didn't. I would say there was general discussion with acknowledgement that because of this meeting timeline, they might not have anything. They're here just for the record, Billy, that you are. And I'm not speaking for the commission, although I am a commissioner. So I'm Very not. good, Billy. Um, when we got the notice, um, we had a discussion, but we didn't come to a conclusion of really what to do. So what we did was kind of hoping you guys had it. We prepared a list of questions that if we ask the applicants uh, Verizon, they have to address in their application. That's my understanding of the rules. So we put a list of questions together. Now, I just want to apologize personally. I didn't know they had a, a tower sitting behind the state complex. So some of those questions you'd say, why would they ask that? So, but the point is, we gave the, the select board 
our thoughts of questions we would ask or you might want to ask so that you could get those answered in the application and ultimately if you choose you could choose to have you have standing automatic standing I don't believe I'm not sure of this but maybe somebody could check I don't believe the neighbors are going to get notice of this though I believe it's going to be a limited scope application and I think that they that uh, allows the applicants to waive notice so I think the neighbors won't hear it so there may be a role for the select board at least to put in questions or a placeholder not a lot of work just so you keep abreast of what's going on maybe nothing will happen nothing to do maybe something will come up that you want to address mm -hmm. so that's that's my thinking Katie, is that yeah I will. Katie Clark. <laughs> Planning Commission member, but not representing the Planning Commission. Um, just wanted to add that we also discussed the kind of challenge that that this is not technically a permitted use in this in this zone, either existing or in the proposed bylaws, and that it likely does not comply with uh, the vision of the town as laid out in the municipal plan. Um, or the new bylaws, which right, or according we understand are in effect now. Um, so I think that that only has limited potential by um, uh, strength in that in that decision as to whether or not that's placed there. But we did have a, a rather long discussion about our understanding of, of how this does or does not comply with the vision of the town. And in fact, one of the questions I think we posed was, is there intention? Is, do they have an intention to apply for a permit to the DRB? Yeah, I, you know, they, they'll tell us what they do. If you ask, they'll tell us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, Gail, um, Kane, and then Wendy. Uh, I'm asking because I generally don't know. Um, regardless of whether it complies with the zoning laws, is it considered a, a um, vital infrastructure? Because it is a cell tower with a town that largely relies on cell phones. I don't know the definition. It's, a, it's, a, <coughs> Go ahead. it's just a certificate of public good application at this point. Um, I don't know the exact answer to your question, Kane. And I'm quoting Planning Commission Chair. Well, no, I shouldn't say quoting, but my understanding is this is going through to the, oh, I'm going to get it wrong. Now, PUC, Public Utility Commission, that is exempt from most local zoning per your comments, Katie, right? So I think we have the ability to potentially weigh in, but I think it's more yeah, limited. That's what I was, that is was my, my high level understanding my of question. this type of permit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do we, who was the list of questions provided to? Uh, Neil was compiling them. Okay, and um, do we have a question? Of, were um, do we have a, um, the timing, right? I believe there's a 60 day comment Correct. period. So right. There's a 60 day comment period, but the parties ask to come back to them in 30 days, so they have time to incorporate comments or questions in their filing, and now off the top of my head. I said, do you know what 30 days is? 30 days from March 28th, and if someone could do the math, that's gonna be, yeah. give or take April 28th, 27th would be when, they, when they'd ask. Their, their application probably be May, we assume they'll just they'll file on the 60th day, so somewhere in the May 25, 26, 27 time frame. Whitney. Yes, yeah, so of course we got um, this letter from the MSK attorneys because we're in a butter for this um, mm -hmm. for this project, and um, I just wanted to say thanks to the Planning Commission for um, adding this to your uh, long list of things you're working on um, because I, I definitely do feel like the the list of a butter is short because you know of the nature of where this is going so I, I feel like um very grateful that you guys are considering you know for bringing this up as the town and not just leaving us individual abutters to um ask these questions um i i definitely have a couple of concerns of course and i don't know if this is the time to bring it up or if i if i should go to the it doesn't sound like we even have an option because it's a, the Public Utility Commission, but I have no idea because it's a cert, they're applying for a certificate of public good. So we don't even know where we, what options we have for commenting or change or 
amendment to their plans or anything like that. So I'm hoping to get some guidance from you guys. Thank you. Okay. Um, certainly one option would be to uh, take a look at the, all the questions that Billy has put together. Um, review this uh, and put it back on the agenda for next time. Well, to be fair, I think all of us put questions together. So, <laughs> I'm, giving, I'm giving credit. I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not backing away. <laughs> fair. Um, yes. Yeah, I don't know the protocol. I guess I don't know if you know Tom around. I guess one to say, Whitney, is um, I hear you and if there's useful ways if there's aligning questions between you all as abutters and what the Planning Commission has brought up, those certainly seem to make sense to flag. Um, I don't know what our best due process is in terms of timing of next meeting and indicating. You know, just to say, when the temporary went up, the select board had no objection. We filed a no objection on a consent agenda that said, yes. we really need cell coverage. We're not going to say anything about it as a town. Obviously, this is permanent, but mm -hmm. um, that was the previous in 2011, I think. And I'll also note that there are a number of aerials uh, in that general area around uh, the public safety building. Um, I don't know whether they're in compliance with this new, with your new regs, uh, but it doesn't surprise me that uh, our state's uh, public safety department would have uh, aerial communication. And <coughs> cell coverage for our fire station seems like an important thing. So go, to go on record, should I just mention my concerns so that they can, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, number one, of course, the noise. This, um, where we live, because they're going to the be- construction noise or ongoing noise? They're planning on running a generator once a week, a diesel generator to make sure that um, their systems are up and running. And the, where where we live, which is right next to the site, um, it is like a sound highway already because of the fields and the river. Um, we hear a lot of noise from the highway, from Main Street. We hear from um, the actual Department of General Services fires up a uh, another type of backup system that sounds like there's a jet at a doorstep. Um, so we're, we're actually pretty sensitive about adding one more noise source and we would be fine if, if it was in, it's supposed to be enclosed, if it was enclosed in a soundproof way that, that would satisfy our concern. The second thing is of course, um, adding another really tall 80 foot, 85 foot tall structure and to our landscape, it just seems, um, like it doesn't. That like there's other tall things on the campus there that um, they could attach these things to, like the old smokestack, um, instead of adding another really long tall um, object in the landscape. Those are two that are major two. We understand that this is a public service and it's a good and everybody uses their phone service and the department the the police needs the 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 strength. Oh. Get, that's it. Those are our two concerns. Okay. So the, the town, the 2016 regulations have a telecommunications section, which somehow we require them to show that they couldn't collate these facilities somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know how we have that rule if they don't apply. But the par and the town plan does talk about the importance of at least looking into co-location some other place. I don't know if that addresses Whit that might address Whitney's concern, but it is certainly a town policy that co-location should be looked at. And it's, I think that's some of the questions we have in there too. And we, uh, the memo that we put together also has some quotes from the town plan. So, kind of a backgrounder. By ask, uh, well, Lisa? by asking questions, we don't. That's not. It's just giving us further information at this point, right? It's not right. saying we're going to be party status. Do we uh, see any objections to picking a fight with Verizon? I guess we've already done it once. I just I'm thinking in terms of timing and efficiency. I'm comfortable making a motion that the town of Waterbury submit comments um, inquiring on the two subjects just discussed and. Um, additional ones sent by individual select board members 
to Tom after reviewing the list, if you're comfortable compiling those, Tom, and submitting them ahead of the 30-day deadline just to at least get it to them in the timeline. If it's truly just a, can you answer the co-location piece, this noise piece, and perhaps a sampling of the town plan. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we can assess further once we have responses when we do. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Handicapped parking in the business district. There is in your packet somewhere and we yeah. have email from, from Bill Woodley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Attributed via the highway. <laughs> I've got my packet here. Uh, messed up. Yep, I got it. It's the only, it's one of the yes, they got a color. 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 Yeah. It's got a blue Bill's, Bill's summary was good, but it still doesn't address the problem of poor handicapped parking in the downtown. You know, I, I, you know, yeah. I don't know if it's just not feasible at all, but I didn't get that. He, you know, he was citing where there are, but there's but all the locations are a bit away from the core downtown. And to not say someone who's truly handicapped shouldn't be able to have some revert, you know, even like, you know, you have like the credit union, they have that 15 minute parking space, you know, even something like that mm -hmm. so someone could just drop things off you know because they have they have, they have lack of mobility mike do you have a proposed action i guess i would note one piece not reflected on this municipal breakdown is the private parking lot at td bank i did check on my way in there's two accessible spots i recognize it's a paid lot um, but I just did want to acknowledge that those are not reflected as these are municipally owned or municipally MOU lots. Right. Um, what I'm and seeing in the email from Stantec, at least for street parking, is that it requires a seven foot wide parkway and that, quote, this doesn't work well for Waterbury as the parkway is typically about two feet wide. I'm not, right. I'm not diminishing that it's a problem. I just don't. I mean, we wanted bike lanes when we redid Main Street and the right of way was this tiny. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know what the solution is. Yeah. From from reading Bill's synopsis, I don't know what the solution. And I don't even know. I don't know if you know this, Tom. Like in the paid parking lot, you know, like for instance, like if you go to downtown Montpelier with the meters, mm -hmm. someone who's handicapped has handicapped stickers, plates, or placards. They don't have to pay those those meters so would someone in the private parking lot would that be also the case i'm not sure i can't imagine that that's the case it's private property mm -hmm. I, I i was going to say that that exact issue it's private property i don't think you know someone who's handicapped you know if if there's anything you know whether there's some sort of paid parking like meters but we don't have any really meters other than that paid parking lot. And as, as, as people have indicated, it is a private parking lot. It's just that, you know, there is no space for handicapped individuals to park. And I know it may be just out of our control to be able to create something. certainly is out of our control on Main Street. If the right. board desired us to create additional handicapped spaces, I think the way forward would be through agreements with the owners of the private lots. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can we can research that and try to try to come to an agreement if desired. If it's unlikely to be free. Main Street's not an option. Would Stowe Street be an option to have a handicap? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Stowe Street. Do you know? I don't know offhand. Also, if you're going to respect you, Stowe Street's not that convenient. Yeah. 
I would say Whitney, who has uh, engages with property in that locale and parking, has her hand up. Okay, Whitney. I didn't expect to actually do anything on this part of the agenda, um, but <laughs> when mm -hmm. I moved over across the street to Ten Sto Street, uh, I had talked to the a neighboring gas station that's right on the corner there of Stone Main Street and talked to him about parking and mm -hmm. and because we have an accessibility ramp to our business now, now I, I wanted to check in with him to see if he was comfortable with the idea of putting up a, a handicapped fine and providing space for that to happen. And he was. Um, huh. That would be a good alternative. So I mm -hmm. would, I would definitely advocate for um, the t town to go to these businesses and ask because you might be surprised that you know they they might be willing to do such a thing if they were given the tools to do so at champlain farms right yeah champlain oil company right Coco? and it's not oh. actually the champlain oil company it was rob i think he's the general manager that said that he owns or operates that space and he would be willing to do it so i don't know if you have to go to the parent company you can oh. just talk to rob and I don't know if if the senior center slash the American Legion would designate one of their back spots as a handicapped space as well. That might help. You know, it's pretty close to all those Snow Street and Main Street. But, you know, I don't know if it's all that much closer than what we have on Elm Street and some of the other ones listed, but. I think it is it a little, little, little closer. There are four on Bidwell, which is you know, not far away, really. Yeah. Right. One is right at the top. One on Elm Street. Across from. Okay. That Champlain Farm sounds like a, you know, because that's right there. Mm -hmm. That's right in the center of things would be really helpful if if we could have some sort of an agreement. Town follow up on that? Absolutely. All right. Any other comments on accessible parking at this point? If you have a contact for the paid bot, I feel like let's just reach out and ask what the policy on payment is and if they would consider working with the town. Thank you. For uh, when you, yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, uh, the, we had moved a uh, an added line item on the uh, celebration of the National Stuttering Week. Uh, Dana uh, Kanzenski had asked uh, if we'd be willing to uh, put up uh, sea green lights either on the train overpass uh, or at the traffic circle. And I wanted to see if the town had been able to look into the oh, This email's not in any other time. So we just brought it one copy. Yeah. There was an email that went to Roger and myself. I think Tom and Bill Butcher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bill indicated the overpass was probably too difficult to do. Yeah. At least in the short term. Yeah, the initial request was to change the lights. And, uh, on the train trestle. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, behind the behind the yeah, train. Yeah. Explain that those were. It was far too complicated. Yeah, yeah those are probably special yeah. lights. So quite the quite the, the fixture. He was. He was. Bill Woodruff was Amanda Walter, and to be here, I think it's her and her organization to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, to put C is it C foam? C green. C green mm -hmm. colored lights in in or around the roundabout. Um, to to draw awareness to National Stuttering, stuttering. Awareness Week. Mm -hmm. National Stuttering Awareness Week. They have they have the lights on hand, or right. they are lights. That's what we're suggesting is that they would find the right shade of lights and yes. do the installation. I feel like finding else? sea green at Abishan would be hard. It might be a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they work more in primaries. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? <laughs> the, um... Yeah, there's also a, a desire to have a banner 
and right. we're thinking of yeah. putting it down there, but we have a great place for a banner right in front of Town Hall. Yeah, we just right. I, that's there. what I was thinking too. Uh, yeah. She asked uh, if we could put the banner in the traffic circle, which it seems to me a bad idea. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems yeah. distracting. Yes, uh, I don't. I don't think. But we have either uh, that. Uh, welcome to Waterbury sign uh, near um, mm -hmm. the, the uh, pack and send mm -hmm. or uh, the banner display area right in front of uh, the municipal offices, which I think either of those would work. I think the banner display uh, is, mm -hmm. is a perfect place for a banner. Right, <laughs> the, the, our, our banner stand. Banner stand. Mm -hmm. um. You put a green light on the banner? On the banner stand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like next to it? Seafoam green. Seafoam green. Seafoam green. Seafoam green. Seafoam green. I don't know if we need the foam. Just oh, like a side clip light you're saying on that guy? You no. Know, remember you have the, the Vermont Lights Away lights display there by the banner? I mean, you could potentially then have just a light that's on the ground that shines up at it and makes it green. Yeah. Yep. Like the Vermont Lights Away thing that we did a couple Christmases ago. COVID Christmas. COVID Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I have a motion? Uh, <laughs> well, I, yeah. So are we, where did we want to put, put the lights, not the banner? I'm still hungry. Uh, well, yeah, she asked if we could put lights. Uh, oh, in, in the, the roundabout, uh, like in yeah. the bushes? You know how this past Christmas they had those mm -hmm. white balls, balls. lit up? Yes, yes, yeah. yes okay. Like string Christmas lights. So like that. You know, Woody, Woody's comment today to me, um, was that the foliage on the, the gardens is going to start to bloom very shortly. Yeah. So putting Christmas lights in the shrubbery might be counterproductive because it might not show for the week. This is this is in a few weeks that this happened. Yeah. So he and I just had a brief discussion about it would be great if she found something freestanding. But if that can't happen, then put them in the roundabout and in any fashion that she would like. Um, and then the banner would go here on the banner. Gotcha. Uh, that, that, that was the, the week, week of May 13th to 19th. Oh, so it's coming right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, um, the daffodils are in bloom, so. I move to allow f for the green lights <coughs> to be placed in the roundabout and for a banner to be hung on the banner stand. Wow. For, for stuttering <coughs> awareness. If the, banner, if the banner stand doesn't work for them, would you be okay if they did it near packing stand? Well, now i got to change my whole motion. I'm going to really lean towards the banner. Okay. Uh, you want to start over? I, no, I think you I, No, I had completed the motion and then okay. I had a recommendation. I'm going to stand with my motion, though. Motion. Okay. You got a second on that. Can I second it and just say in consultation with the public works director, as in Woody gets ultimate veto? You accept that? I accept that. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? There was, almost, there was almost some. Okay. Life! <laughs> you gotta that. No, that's the, no. That's the cursor. <laughs> I'm getting tired. <laughs> you, you guys I tell you, man. You guys in technology make the best bet. All in favor? No fun. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any abstentions? All right, that carries. And now we have, yes, we may have that. And now we have the uh, agenda for the ensuing meeting on May 6th. Right now we have uh, a very short consent agenda, yes. the bylaw update, public hearing, which would be the zoning, new zoning regs, right? And the there's Waterbury no, Center there's Village. There's no time stamp on that, on the Waterbury yeah. Center Village Center designation. Is that one, is the hearing mixed with that? Are we tacking that onto the hearing? Uh, no. That's okay. separate, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're, we arrange the times based on uh, yeah. our right. impeccable timing. <laughs> um, anything else people would like to add? So, for the record, tonight we've added the Friends of the Waterbury Reservoir. Right, friends. The yep. hazard mitigation plan, which I'll double check with Neil about, and then we've we've just uh, tabled to some extent the South Tower Campus District. Doesn't that need to go back? 
I don't have anything here, right? And Crab Fair. Oh, and the Crab Fair. Mm -hmm. oh, Crab Fair and Cell Tower. Yeah, there we go. Filled up the agenda without <laughs> any real effort. A lot of liquor licenses expire at the end of April, so you should expect to see some of those on there. That's good. Um, Anything uh, in the parking lot that uh, needs uh, attention? How about that animal control ordinance? I say we can do it. Well, I was just going to add if we could. All right, we're going to move that one up. If we could have a discussion, I guess, whatever. What? Uh, hold on, let me go back to my notes because I took so many. Um, and if we could have a non binding discussion, further, further topic of conversation about the housing trust. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to take up that much time. I just want to keep it on the agenda. Ten minutes. Ten minutes is fine. Got it. Um, and then I don't know. We don't normally note next meeting, right? Just to say, I said on May twentieth, we could do rental registry ordinance. That's additional that's info with it. Draft, so I can put it forward. And on May twentieth, um, you should add to the draft heavy mitigation plan. Oh, that. Just have that on this one for May 6th. It goes on May 20th. I believe so. Oh, okay. So we're going to take half of the I do have a draft already started, Tom, so maybe that's what prompted that draft. You don't need it before then? So there's a public hearing on May 2nd. The second one should probably be the 20th at the select board. Okay. So that's for the hazard mitigation. Okay. Who's right. doing the first hearing? First hearing, um, we just have a draft schedule for the first hearing. Um, we're talking to the, to the state and CDRPC about it. But. Cool. But just know, as a general practice, it would be great to get notice to the select board whenever we have hearings, yeah. and no, or we should think not, about throwing them on the top of the website. It's not formally scheduled yet. Got it. Would dovetail a good timeline to have the 20th for the second public. Right. Okay. Um, right. When do we need to start talking about the state police contract? Because that's going to come up in July, June, July. Uh, it expires June thirtieth. Yeah. Um, working on it with them now. Okay. So the twentieth. I think we can put a placeholder for May May twentieth. And do we have the second timeline for planning commission? Don't we need to have two hearings? Do we know when the second one is yet? Yes, but it's awful late for my brain to... <laughs> I know, I say it's on the bulletin board inside, I can go. What are you, what are you asking? I was asking, isn't there a second planning... I know we have to hold two public hearings. I didn't know how far apart. It's like between 20 to 40 days. This, in theory, is the first bylaw update public hearing. Or do we only have one? Is I thought they had those public hearings. Okay. Plan no, I don't. I was remembering wrong. Planning Commission, I think, had to have two. We might only have to have one. I was asking yes. if we needed a second. Well, only so. one for select board. Yeah, Thanks, Fauna Friend, Lisa. This is the last one. <laughs> yeah, no, we're done. I'm pretty sure. I think no, that makes sense. Yeah, they had two. Yeah. So that's why I was asking one. Yeah. Unless there's changes. I would say they've actually had three at this point, for right. the record. There's, there's it's already, there's already a May 6th. Yeah, great. We confirmation has been select board is one. I was thinking of planning commission. At this out. Um, I would say I move to find that premature public knowledge of pending real estate matters would clearly place the town of Waterbury at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Move to second in. Hearing none, all favor say aye. 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 Can you guys call me on my cell phone for the executive session? If you say aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? I think Kane. Any? Yeah, it was seconded. I, uh, I seconded. Kane seconded. Seconded. Passed. Uh, any opposed? Any abstentions? No. Do I was doing the second part. Yeah. I moved to enter executive session for the purpose second. of discussion of real estate transactions. Second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all of say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. 
Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you. Thanks.